Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another exciting uh, episode of Z Corner. Today, we are going to be talking about trending topics. And if in Dumuzambe Fidech Tika, and just like we usually tell you, right, Z Corner is more like Idia Shidi Apanen Sunday in high definition. And of course, uh, during this uh, live stream, right, I am going to be joined by Mr. Binwell Mpundu, who happens to be an independent member of Parliament, Avenangana. So if you know anything about us, Copala people is we always represent, and uh, this time around, right, we have Mr. Binwam Pulu. He's going to be helping us uh, discuss some of these uh, interesting topics. So, getting back to, to, uh, to today's uh, conversations, right, we're going to be talking about the fact that uh, you know we have heard uh, saying the youth empowerment needs to be paid back. So, there has been a lot of speculations with regards to you know the general mood in Zambia, and a lot of people are sort of uh, giving their opinions. Should the youth empowerment be paid back or should it not be paid back? And uh, how was this particular money utilized by the people who actually benefited from, from, from this particular empowerment? Because, you know, the piper has come to collect his money. And then we're also going to be talking about the fact that uh, we have heard, obviously, a little bit of APRO with regards to some, uh, you know, uh, PF members, former PF members are uh, defecting and joining UPND. We obviously saw what happened on the Copper Belt with regards to Rashida Mulenga defecting to UPND. Well, th there was a lot of security. There was a lot of, uh, you know, preparation with regards to security. So should former 
PF members defect to UPND and should UPND welcome them? And last but not the least, we're also going to be talking about the fact that Mr. Davis Mueller was recently sort of, uh, you know, questioned by the police with regards to the vehicles that were utilized during the campaign period. But of course, nothing sinister happened because Mr. Davis Mueller is enjoying the comfort of his home as we speak at this particular moment. So all is well that and uh, that ends well. However, Mr. Davis Mueller did prophesy and he warned uh, a lot of people back in the day saying, if we lose elections, meaning PF, if PF loses elections, a lot of PF ministers would be arrested. So is his prophecy coming to fruition? So uh, I have my guest today, Mr. Binwa Mpundu. First of all, welcome to the show and congratulations for winning as an independent member of parliament. What you did was one of a kind. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing? Mr. Mpundu, welcome to the show. Good evening and how are you? Can you hear me? I think we have a little bit of a lag. Mr. Mpundu, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I think I think we're having a little bit of an issue. So, uh, uh thank you so much for hosting me. Um I don't know what time it is, uh, but uh, it's, it's I don't know if you Uh, yes, I can. I can hear you now, but we're just having issues connecting. Uh, but you should be able to reconnect, and you are going to be able to uh, join us once more. So uh, we're obviously having a little bit of issues with regards to Mr. Mpundu's connection, but he will be back. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching me right now, share this video on your timeline and in five different Facebook groups that you belong to because this is the only way that you really help us sort of uh, grow the platform and the community. So to all the people watching us on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook main page, which is Z Corner, and our Z Corn TV Facebook page, which is our secondary page, and also on YouTube, kindly share this video. Hit the like button, share this video on your Facebook timeline and in five different Facebook groups that you belong to. And remember, if you want to join us and be able to have an interaction with uh, Mr. Binwell um, Pundu, kindly join the link in the description. So the link in the description has actually been pinned and then you are going to be able to be part of this particular conversation. So Mr. Mpundu is rejoining the stream right now. So ladies and gentlemen, to all the viewers out there, should it be paid? So Mr. Mpundu is back. Welcome back, sir. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Can you hear me, Mona? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I think we're having a little bit of a lag. Uh, that's why maybe we're having this awkward silence. But good evening, Mr. Mpundu. How are you doing? Good evening, Honorable. I don't know whether you can hear me, Honorable. <laughs> we're having an issue. Honorable Mpundu. Mona, I don't know if you can hear me. Your line is uh, pretty bad that much. Yes, yes, I have noticed. The, the 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 connection is not really that good. It's not really that good. But if you can, if you can just go on, and uh, I don't know whether we can stabilize the internet. That would be better. Okay. So 
um, we're still having some connection issues, uh, but he will be back. I'm sure he will definitely be back. And uh, as soon as uh, the internet connection is stable, uh, Honorable Mpundu will definitely be back. I'm sure he is already back. So let me add him one more time. Good evening. Mona, good evening. Thank you Finally, so much. It's great to have you, Honorable Mpundu. Honorable Mpundu. Co congratulations for your... Um, that was a tremendous victory. A lot of people... Uh, we were giving you the benefit of the doubt, but we didn't know that you could actually pull, pull it off. And you did. So congratulations for doing what you did. You deserve it. Thank you, my guy. I'm uh, extremely humbled uh, to have been given this privilege by the people of Unkana to save them. Of course, there were a lot of people that were not sure as to you know whether I was making a mistake by going solo. But right. as it were... I knew exactly what we were doing, uh, the people running behind me, and I was very confident, Mona. Right. So what, what really made you so confident? Because, uh, you know, at, at that particular time, right, the PF had a lot of, uh, they had the willpower, they had the financial backing. What really gave mm. you the, the, the idea to go independent, beat the MPs, PF and UPND and emerge victorious? Do you have a strong connection with the uh, people of um, Kana constituency? First of all, Mona, um, I've been on this journey for a long time. Um, I was, I think that uh, 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 anyone can argue, but I was a front runner in the 2016 adoption you know, race. The gentleman who was then adopted in 2016, who subsequently got elected as a MP from Kana, was a newcomer, very new on the scene. I think uh, as new as the adoption process of the 2016. So I think that uh, my connection with the people of Unkana dates as far back as before 2016. And between you and me, um, uh, I should have been made MP or I should have been adopted in 2016. And so you can see that uh, I've basically progressed in terms of my relationship with the people of Unkana. And so when 2021 came, um, I think that for me, it was a, a walk in the park. Look, uh, I always say this, uh, Mona, uh, politics is a science. Like they say, political science, politics is a science. Now, between you and me, uh, just like science dictates that when you plant a mango, you always uh, get a mango. You cannot get a potato out of a mango. And right. so is politics. If you want to uh, connect with the people, if you want the people to rally behind you, you must invest your time in managing relationships, in building the relationship with the people, such that when that time come when you need the people, you'd have already done the needful in building you know, that relationship. So I, I think that for me, when we were walking into the 2021 general election, I had already done the homework. I had built the necessary relationship with the people. I had consulted them extensively. Actually, mm -hmm. between you and me, it's the people who had actually told me go independent. I had options. I could have stood on independent or rather on, on, on UPND. But the people had told me, in, you know, you wish to know, Muna, that um, right, I, had right. a lot of I had a lot of meetings uh, before the adoption process or rather in building up the adoption process. In each of those meetings, there was a question that was asked by the residents of Nkana. Namely, what are you going to do this time around if you are not, you know, adopted? Mm -hmm. That question was not answered me. I would throw it back to them. Namely, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. I can tell you, at every meeting, you know, when that question was asked, the people themselves actually told me, we want you to go independent. I would ask them, why not in UN, um, uh, uh, UPND? They will actually tell me, no. We want you to go independent. So the decision was pretty much made by the people themselves. Lovely. Perfect. Now, uh, Ms. Honor Bompundu, obviously we need mm -hmm. to hear your synopsis. Uh, I, I, I don't really know whether you have given us an extensive breakdown of what really transpired August 12, 2021, because you have been dancing in these circles for a very long period of time. You already know the political tactics and uh, the reality on the ground. So just give us your breakdown of uh, why 
what happened on August 12th happened. And uh, were you expecting this particular outcome? I mean, you are independent, so I really believe you've got the leeway to sort of uh, talk about these things, and, uh, and you're not really going to be in trouble if you can. So why do you think we had this particular outcome on 12th August? First of all, um, I knew exactly that I would go through. Uh, and, and secondly, I knew that the UPND would win. Now, uh, people, people don't hide. Right, because people like uh, uh, Given Luwinda said, we are not seeing any wind of change. Uh, GBM was on record saying, wind of change. The PF were mm -hmm. so, so confident that the people of Zambia were pretty much comfortable with them and they were reluctant. But what type of narrative, contrary to their expectations, did you have? First of all, I want to agree with you. At some point, we all thought it was not possible for the UPND to win this one. But I can tell you, when we went into the actual campaigns, this, I think, that is on record. Um, for me personally, I got the feelers on the ground because between you and me, when we had our campaign meetings, the mm -hmm. moment you would mention a PF, the moment you would... Uh, ask people to uh, sort of um, uh, uh, give you a feeling as to what they thought should happen on top. Because remember, I was campaigning for myself. And then, uh, between you and me, I was requested to campaign for President Lungu. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of meetings we had held where the moment you brought up the subject of uh, the, the presidential candidate, the people would in unison tell you that no, we are going for 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 HH. Okay, mm. these mm. these are feedbacks that I would give you know uh, those who were in the leadership in the PF to say, guys, you need to pull up your socks because what we are getting on the ground is completely different from what we've all anticipated. So between you and me, I knew uh, uh, way back before the actual uh, votes were cast that I think that the PF was headed for, 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 for trouble. But in my case, I knew very well, the signals were very loud on the ground that you know, uh, would eventually beat you know, Alexander. Not, don't forget, Nkana is, is a tricky constituency, okay, in as far as re-electing a, a, a candidate is concerned. Since 1964, there's not been a person who's held this seat twice. So even when you walk into the election, you know that the issue of uh, uh, re-election, non-re-election, is greeting you. And mm -hmm. when you haven't performed like my predecessor, then you know for sure that uh, you are headed into troubled waters. So for us, we we're very confident. The, 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 the feedback on the ground was, was fantastic. Uh, everywhere we went, we could see. You see, you... Politics is very easy. You are able to see to distinguish between genuine, you know, uh, support and fake support. What we got mm -hmm. was genuine support because whereas on the other hand, our colleagues would gather huge numbers, you know, obviously people flocking in to uh, uh, attend the, the, the meetings because of the monies they were offering, us we had nothing to give the people. But you could see the morale. You could see the enthusiasm from the supporters that came to attend our meetings. We knew very for sure that we were carrying the day. And I knew, like I've stated, that PF was headed for, for trouble. <clears throat> Lovely. <clears throat> now, Honorable Mpundu, uh, here we're, we're, we mostly look at things from a different angle. So you will obviously have the pre. Uh, the, the right to either decline or not. But I just want to find out this from you because you are more closer to the political arena and you obviously understand a lot of uh, things that we, the spectators, might not get. So there was a lot of uh, speculations prior to 2021 because if you look at the UPND and the Patriotic Front, right, these particular camps were sort of uh, thought of to be inclining towards uh they were divided into the the, the chinese uh sort of uh related camp and the american related camp so according to your analysis do you think there is 
any other hands that really play uh, some, I don't know, uh, background tactics to sort of sway the people of Zambia or rather the outcome, uh, the outcome of a particular election to turn out in a certain way? Are there any independent uh, players who are sort of, uh, you know, trying to sway the public to incline towards a particular camp? What's your experience and what do you think about this particular notion? Well, I think that uh, in all honesty, that um, the, you, you refer to two countries, the United States of America, and then you also refer to China. I, I want to believe that uh, both these countries have got interests in African you know, you know, countries. And so when any election is here, uh, obviously, you 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 want to believe that they will obviously be interested to see the outcome of the of the election. As to their actual involvement in the electoral process is one thing that I cannot you know confirm for sure. But I can tell you, if you look at the two political parties, the two giants that were were, were competing in the last election, namely the UPND and the PF, mm -hmm. <clears throat> one is meant to believe that. Um, you know, the PF was more inclined towards, you know, the, 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 the superpower China this end. And I want to believe, I think, you know, that uh, the UPND was inclined to the Western countries, namely, you know, the USA. But as to the actual involvement at the actual, you know, activities of these two countries, you know, uh, in, in the political uh, activities or in the, in the actual elections, that is what mm. I cannot confirm, you know, uh, at this point. But I know that both countries have had an interest in Zambia. Uh, I can see now that I think that uh, in, in all certainty, we are now a pro-American state now, or government as it were. And, and, and I want to believe that uh, in the previous government, we tilted towards, uh, you, know, you know, China because the investment that, you know, the Chinese government and Chinese entities made in Zambia over the period that the PF has been in power is huge. That obviously is a sign as to the relationship that existed between the Chinese government and the PF government. I think that um, we are seeing more of... Um, a lot of interest from the American government in the now government, and and so I want not to be speculative, in, you know, as regards to how much they were involved in the actual election. Right. So, um, what are the implications of being a pro-American uh, government versus being a pro-China uh, government? Um, if at all there are any uh, advantages, disadvantages. Well, there, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages uh, in, 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 in aligning, you know, when a nation aligns itself to either of the two. Uh, but what we normally look at is, you know, the, the actual commitment of each country towards uplifting the well-being of the, of, of, of the people in, 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 in that country. We talk of Zambia, you know, uh, for instance. If you look like I stated uh, before, uh, if you look at the the <clears throat> the support we received from China in the last couple of years that the PF has been in power, compared to the investments that we got from you know the, the states, that speaks volume of how much each one of those countries is committed to the well-being of uh, of, of of Zambia. Uh, I want to speak from off off the cuff that. I think that we've seen more of uh, you know Chinese investments in Zambia compared to the support that we got you know you know from 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 the United States. Of course, the United States has been very handy in supporting issues to do with uh, health, uh, which obviously the, the the Chinese have not done. The Chinese, on the other hand, have been very you know, uh, uh, reliable in regards to investment in infrastructure, which we haven't seen, you know, from the American government. And so I, I want to, I think, uh, think or rather suggest that both of these comes to, comes, you know, uh, to play in a different fashion. The Americans are very good at assisting a nation in issues to do with humanity, namely issues of health and others. While this China is very good at helping you uh, uh, in issues of investment, investing in general infrastructure and, and the like. 
And so these have got unique advantages and disadvantages. It's up to, uh, you know, uh, which side you, you're looking at. Right. Lovely. Right. Perfect. So to all the viewers watching us, we are having an interesting uh, conversation with Honorable Binwell Mpundu, who happens to be an independent member of parliament of the Nkana constituency. So if you are watching us, we are definitely live. Remember, like this video, share this broadcast, share this video on your timeline and in five different Facebook groups that you belong to, because today's conversations are definitely going to be hot because we are talking to an actual member of parliament so honorable binwa mpundu honorable mpundu you are mm. an independent mp right now mm. parliament. if you look at the 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 balance the the spectrum between pf and upnd right obviously it's a little bit there's an equilibrium right there and then we also have uh, you the independent mps and recently there were by-elections in several parts of zambia and of course i really believe that the upnd did manage to get victorious so uh as an independent member of parliament how are you going to be playing this game and uh, are you going to be tilting towards the pf or towards the upnd and uh, how does that affect your role your performance and uh, are you going to be able to defect at any time <laughs> <laughs> too many questions at once <laughs> you can you can choose whatever you like <laughs> so le let me start by saying that uh, it's a uh, public knowledge that i have had a very good relationship with the the, the pf uh, i think truth be told uh, binu mpundu is here because of um, you know, uh, the, the support that I got from the PF government. These these are people, this is a party, let, let me state, that has built me. I started off as a very young, you know, gentleman, you know, rising through the ranks and far. And so for me to be able to, you know, rubbish the PF, I think that I'll be a, a very ungrateful gentleman. So I'll forever be grateful to the growth that I've uh, 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 achieved in politics owing to you know uh, the pf but here we are we we have the pf on one hand and we have the upnd on the other hand uh, the first thing that happened i think i want to remember precisely that uh, four days after the inauguration ceremony uh, president hh reached out to a, a number of us who are independent namely you know he wanted to you know wanted us to work with him is, is that is, public is, knowledge? is that public information uh honorable Mpundu, very, that uh, HH, uh reached out to independent uh, mps it's very public knowledge in fact you wish to know that uh, the moment we walked out in you know from that interactive meeting with the president we you know it was posted on his page you know it was we equally you know shared uh, you know the outcomes of the meetings and the call from the president was simple uh, gentlemen i want to work with you and he was very candid in his you know uh, request namely i don't want you to worship me i don't want you to do anything that is you know beyond what you you believe in namely if i you know bring in into parliament anything that you don't believe in don't support it but obviously you can't shoot down anything progressive that i bring on that score muna I thought that it was a very genuine request that the president was making. Now, uh, here we are. I have a responsibility now to save the people of Unkana. The number of challenges that the people of Unkana are faced with as we speak. So do I have a choice? The choice I have is to work with the government of the day. Okay, but that doesn't mean that I have joined the UPND. All I have said is that anything that they will bring that will be progressive, who am I not to support them? And if you've seen my attitude in parliament, uh, anything that is not reasonable that comes from the UPND, I castigate it, I, I object it. Anything reasonable that comes from them, I, I support wholeheartedly, and vice versa. Anything reasonable that comes from the PF you know, by way of introducing a motion or otherwise, I support anything that doesn't sound reasonable from the PF that they bring into parliament, I actually object. I want, uh, you know, uh, to work, uh, to, to be as independent as possible. Of course, uh, 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 
bearing in mind that we have entered a marriage of convenience, namely that we want to work with the government of the day. But working with the government of the day does not mean that we will have to accept anything and everything they bring. I think that the UPND stands to benefit from our relationship because if they value friendship, remember, Muna, a true friend will tell you when you are wrong. And that is what we seek to do. I personally seek to tell the UPND when they are wrong that you are wrong. If I tell the, the UPND that they are headed for disaster, they should actually take that as a gospel truth because I don't have any reason to mislead them. Ours is a friendship, a mutual you know, friendship that is based on building each other. I want to help them you know, uh, uh, see it from where we sit, see things from where we sit. Because look, when you are in power, there's always a temptation to ignore uh, the realities on the ground. So I am playing that role of reminding the UPND of what is reality or what is existing and what the, the, the people are actually expecting from them. Because power can get into you and you can get to forget easily. I can cite a, a, a few examples of some of you know individuals within you know this new government that have that have let power you know make them blind already. So for us, we are playing the objective you know friend to the UPND, meaning that when they are wrong, we will tell them, gentlemen, you are headed for disaster. If they are you know uh, are doing you know uh, 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 fantastic, we will tell them, or rather, we will give them a pat on their butt. So I think that they stand to benefit from this relationship. Right. So <clears throat> we are receiving a lot of your comments to all the viewers watching us. Please send us all those comments. We have Honorable Mpundu right here in, um, you know, uh, this particular studio. And we want you to participate in case you belong to Nkana constituency. You can always uh, type your contributions, your questions, ETC. So people like Given Mwanza are agreeing with you, Honorable Mpundu. And a lot of our viewers are actually uh, agreeing with what you're saying. For example, Paxina says, uh, well spoken, uh, sir, and they are agreeing with what you are saying. So to all the people watching us, please let us know where you are watching us from and kindly share this video. Hit the like button because we need to have these types of information. So Honorable Mpundu, mm -hmm. obviously at this particular moment, right, the euphoria mm -hmm. has died down. Uh, the excitement uh, post August 12th is obviously mm -hmm. running out and uh, people are going to be very expectant of the UPND. Now, having that in mind, right? Because uh, I want to ask you this question uh, from two angles. How do you expect the, P, uh, the UPND to perform with regards to deliverables, with regards to also the expectations of the people of Zambia? Because during the opposition, right, the UPND really gave us huge proclamations. But right now, they have all the instruments of power. They basically do not have any excuses. It's either you show the results or you give excuses. So based on the political science that you are very much uh, aware of, what do you see happening in the next two, three years based on the expect uh, expectations of the Zambian people? Well, Muna, I want to be as candid, I want to be as frank as I can be. Personally, I don't envy the UPND. They've uh, sat in a very hot seat. OK, mm. I think that it's public knowledge that, um, you know, the economic dynamics are not favorable, you know, for the European. They're not conducive at all. I think that over time we had lost it in terms of uh, the economic fundamentals. And so the UPND have stepped into deep waters in as far as the economy is concerned. And between you and me, they've got to make very tough decisions. Already we've seen, you know, uh, uh, President HH make very tough decision now between you and me you know a businessman will make a decision based on you know uh, 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 profitability while it's a politician who always have to make a decision based on uh, popularity uh, and so, <laughs> yeah 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 and so you uh, oftentimes for us politicians we have to ask ourselves this decision i'm going to make is it popular okay and i have seen you know, uh, the UPND, you know, uh, 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 become very courageous to take some of the decisions because I want to cite, for instance, the decision to remove subsidy is 
one very unpopular decision, but it's a decision that has to be made. Because you see, the challenge that you know we face as politicians is you are always looking to the next election. Okay. And your decisions are hampered because you in your mind is the next election. If I make this mm. decision, how does it affect me in the next election? So uh, in all fairness, I want to salute you know, the UPND. They've made very tough decisions so far, which decisions obviously are going to put us on the correct you know, trajectory in terms of us regaining our economic fortunes and stuff like that. But you wish to note that these are very unpopular decisions because they affect ultimately the livelihood of our people. Because when you, when you remove subsidies, remember the result and or the result is that you know it you know the prices of essential commodities will actually go up. Now, this is contrary, this is going to be contrary to what the people were promised. You know, uh, for lack of better terms, the UPND had promised a mini heaven on earth. They want. Mm -hmm. They they promised that they were going to make you know a, a, a commo essential commodities pr the prices of essential commodities is much cheaper, uh, but the decisions they've taken now uh, obviously are going to do the opposite or are going to see the opposite results uh, you know uh, uh, recorded. Now, I think that you followed me clearly. They have made very tough decisions, which we must commend them for. Uh, which decisions may actually cost them, but which decisions we actually need as a country, mm -hmm. because these are decisions that are going to set us on the right path in terms of recovery, but which decisions are actually contrary to what they promised. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I stated that I don't envy, you know, President H.H. He is sitting in a very, very hot seat. And between you and me, he is very you know, um, courageous. Yes. Issues of Qadarism, for instance, you know, when you say I don't want Qadarism, or, right? Because the question has always been, how do the people who support us as politicians survive? Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Because nobody will be able to, you know, pay them for the support. I think we're having uh, uh, some connection issues. We are having some connection issues, and uh, Honor Bompundu will be right back with us. So I have uh, the regular, uh, the usual suspects, brother Oscar, all the way from Italy, and brother Jason representing Luansha. So uh, you are obviously going to be given opportunities to interact with uh, Honor Bobinwa Mpundu. But good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good evening to you, Brother Muna. Good evening. Are you yeah. loving the conversation tonight with uh, Honorable Bin Wampun? I'm loving the conversation, and I'm so happy to see the Honorable actually coming live and be able to, uh, to interact with us and the people at, at large. So I think for now, let me just say good evening to Brother Mpombo. I just have a few questions for, for the Honorable when he comes back. I think I'll oh. be able to interact more with him. Right, Let's right, right. So he's going to make it. I'm sure he's going to rejoin because, you know, we're just having some internet issues, but he will be able to rejoin. So, Brother yeah, Oscar, good evening. good evening, Brother Oscar. How are you doing? Hello, good evening, Mr. Muna. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, all the viewers. Thank you. And I'm, uh, I'm okay. It's cold. Uh, yeah, about minus two degrees here. But um, it's winter season, so it's, it's, it's normal. It's quite normal time. All right. Okay. So I can see uh, Honorable Mpundu rejoining. But anyway, Brother Oscar, how are you uh, enjoying the interview with Honorable Mpundu? I am enjoying the interview, Mr. Muna, and uh, um, I'm quite delighted because actually Honorable Mpundu is my minister in any case. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we are copala, man. 
Ako pa lang. Of course. Ave na ang kana. Tuli ba na ang kana? Tuli na ang kana. I'm telling you. So I think it's um, he is my minister. I have um, I heard about about him. About um, I think personally I don't know. Maybe we have never met. But I have heard about uh, what the people are talking about, uh, Honorable Mpun, uh, Binwe Ompundu, and um, they talk quite, uh, they say good positive things about him, which... All which... right. Uh, Honorable Mpundu is uh, back. Uh, sorry, we'll get back to you, Oscar. So, Honorable Mpundu, just finish your thoughts. Then we're going to have uh, Brother Jason and Brother Oscar also interact with you because people are eager and dying <laughs> to interact with you. It really seems you're a very popular and influential uh, man. <laughs> PF made a really bad mistake uh, neglecting you. <laughs> but anyway, finish your thoughts, uh, Honorable Mpundu. So uh, le let me end by just stating that, look, like I stated, I am not... You know, I, I I don't envy the position that the UPND is in, uh, but certainly I want to acknowledge that uh, they are very courageous because some of the decisions they are making are very unpopular decision. But I think that for a country like ours, of course, the general populace are going to be affected by these decisions in the name of, you know, the economic hardships for our people getting tougher and tougher. You know, uh, people will have to feel the pinch but ultimately, these are decisions that somebody responsible enough has to make. Uh, but you can only make this decision if you are not looking at the next election. Because if you are looking at the next elections, trust me, you cannot make these decisions because they are very unpopular decisions. But we need them. Uh, so, look, <laughs> I'm not envious of uh, President HH, but I want to say that is one tough man. He's one tough man, and and I think that um, his eyes are set only for the period given to him. Because if it was about going beyond, I don't think that he would have made some of these decisions. Definitely. And one of our viewers, Stella Muyunda, watching us on YouTube. So to all the people watching us, kindly give us all your contributions, your remarks, because we have a very rare privilege to interact with Honorable Mpundu. So before we pass it on to Brother Jason, right, Stella Muyunda has got a question for Honorable Mpundu. She's asking about your thoughts on the increased CDF. And I also would love to add, what do you think is going to happen to the patriotic front with regards to their lifespan due to the fact that they have lost power? So look at the history and according to the facts that we have with regards to history, right? A lot of, uh, you know, uh, political parties usually fizzle out and they end up dying a slow death. So uh, just answer Stella Muyunda's question and the other question before we can move on to the contributions of my fellow panelists. Let me, let me quickly answer your question. For me, I think that the survival of the PF is based on two things, mm -hmm. uh, namely the performance of the UPND and how they themselves will organize themselves, okay? Because as we speak now, the PF is reorganized itself, is, you know, uh, is, is talking about rebranding now. Rebranding is a very big phenomenon. Okay. Right before you talk yeah. about rebranding, sir, uh, what do you mean by the performance of the UPND? Is this is it uh, infrastructural? Well, in the economic perspective. Uh, what, what type of performance are you looking at specifically? Well, let's say the UPND fails to impress the Zambians. The Zambians will begin to look for another option, like they did in the first instance. When they they got fed up with the PF, they went looking for the next option, which was the UPN, because the UPN was the strongest opposition then. So, and what's the likelihood of them failing with regards to the uh, earlier things that you stated? Because you low key answered this question, you talked about the <laughs> likelihood of them. So, what's the if you had to give a probability out of ten, what's the likelihood of the UPND? Not really getting to impress the people of Zambia by the time uh, by the time their mandate is done. Uh, Muna is too early to predict the outcome. You know, uh, uh, regards to uh, whether UPN is going to impress the Zambians or not. It's too early. First of all, even their budget, or even you know, uh, we haven't even seen what they are made of. 
because they are just beginning to implement their first budget. So it's too early for us to be able to predict whether they'll, they'll make it or not, okay? But, and so, uh, what I meant by saying, you know, the survival of the PF depends on one end, you know, uh, the performance of, the, of, of the, the PF. There are a lot of things, you know, by which people are going to measure or are going to uh, make a decision uh, as to whether to vote for a political party or not. You hear people talk, you know, condemn things that used to happen in the previous government, namely, you know, Qadarism and all these things. Now, you, it, of course, that's one thing. You hear people complain about corruption and all these things. So now, the question will obviously be, will UPND do things differently? from all these ills that people had noticed in, in our government, because I was there, okay? Let's talk about Qadarism. The signals so far are that PF, UPND is doing very badly in regards to curbing you know, Qadarism. The, inst the few instances we have seen, number one, you know, UPND cadres walking into an office to beat up a, a, a public servant are bad signals, because even the P if as bad as they were in managing cadres, they never used to reach those extents. You know, we have scenarios where UPND leaders are on uh, are, um, addressing media, sounding warnings and all that. Those are wrong signals. But we, the, the consolation is that we have the goodwill from the president. The president himself seems, seems to be a, a lone soldier in as far as addressing issues of uh, cadreism. So that is one issue, corruption. Okay, today we've seen institutions that are mandated to fight uh, corruption, like the SEC, going full throttle on perceived corrupt practices in the past government. But we have seen very little action towards what is suspected to be corruption in the current government. I'm sure you are familiar with, um, you know, stories that have been reported regarding, you know, fertilizer, you know, uh, uh, procurement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which are happening now. So what is we see and appreciate the efforts being put in by the SEC towards fighting corruption that could have been committed then? We want to see them, you know, going with the same vigor to fight the perceived corruption now. That mm -hmm. is the basis on which the UPN, these, let me say, these are few things as a basis on which the UPND will be judged. Okay, so the survival of the PF, you know, you know, uh, depends on the performance of the UPND mm -hmm. as well as how they restructure, you know, their organization, how they move around, you know, vis-a-vis -vis their rebranding. Now, mm -hmm. there was a question that was asked uh, uh, by our lady, namely my view on CDF. Right. Look, from where I stand as a politician, the best thing that has happened to me particularly me being an independent, is the increase of the CDF from a mega 1.6 to 25.7 uh, million. Because look, let me state, and I hope I don't get misquoted. Mm -hmm. We wish to know, Muna, that the constitution conf confers responsibilities on an MP. The terms of reference of an MP are enactment of laws. We are elected mm -hmm. to go to parliament to enact the law. But what has happened over time is that society has placed extra responsibility on an MP. Today, as an MP, I'm expected to build bridges. I'm expected to do roads. I'm expected to do hospitals, you know, give empowerments. Yet these are far away from what the constitution bestows on me as my responsibility as an elected you know, member of parliament. Now, how do we balance these two things up? Because you wish to know that the responsibility that have been bestowed on MPs, okay, mm -hmm. uh, are such that failure to do those responsibilities, you'll be punished. Failure right. to do the roads, failure to build the clinics and all these things. You as an MP, you'll be punished. The people won't vote for you. So how do we now equalize? We equalize using the funds that have been made available at the disposal of an MP, which is a CDF. The history of CDF, Muna, is that it started as a very small fund, mm -hmm. okay, for an MP to be able to augment government, you know, uh, a central government's effort, 
in bringing development to the people. This fund has grown and other stakeholders like the council have come into the picture. All right? So for me... Hello. Uh, are you still there, Honorable Mpundu? I think we're having uh, the same connection issues but he will be back once more so to all the people watching us at this particular moment we are having a live uh conversation in real time with honorable binwa pundu who happens to be the kind of constituency uh independent mp so this is a very very eye-opening uh interview so i am super excited to have honorable pundu here with us so i am kindly reminding you, the viewers, because you are watching us live and direct, and uh, I am kindly asking you to, sh to, to share this video everywhere. Blast it on your Facebook page and in five different Facebook groups that you belong to because we are really putting in a lot of effort and you can really help us sort of, uh, you know, grow the, 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 the platform and we're going to have more and more exciting conversations. So, gentlemen, in the background, obviously you're going to be able to uh, interact with Mr. Mpundu, or rather Honorable Mpundu, very soon, as soon as he comes, as soon as he uh, concludes his topic. So let me just take time to read your contributions. So Nyota Mudovo says, I'm shocked that Honorable Mpundu doesn't know these details. Uh, Mary Kingdom Chester says, I'm late, said corner family. Welcome, Mary. We are glad that you are here. So Honorable Mpundu is uh, back. Welcome back, sir. Technology is very jealous of us today, Mona. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. The most important thing is showing up and making sure that we don't give up. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let me let me finish my thought and my, let me respond to my, my sister. For me, I think that the best thing that uh, has happened, you know, uh, to us, particularly me as a politician, is the increase of the CDF because at the previous scenario was such that for me to see development in my constituents, I literally had to go and dig somebody's boots, okay? Because decisions were being made in Lusaka in ministries. Now, if that guy in, in the ministry doesn't like you, Muna, you are doomed. You won't give your people what they desire. But what has happened is, you know, halfway uh, us achieving decentralization because now, the mandate to make decisions in as far as development is concerned has been taken down to the very people. If you followed me the last couple of months, all I have done is to go back to the communities, ask them as to what they desire us to give them by way of development. Now, we can proudly promise them that we'll give them what they desire because we have the money. That money is you know, in our hands. I mean, when that money is finally released, Unlike the scenario in the past where even when you promise people a school, you know you'll have to go and beg somebody in Lusaka. And if that somebody doesn't you know, like you, you are doomed. And worse more or better still for us who are now independent, you don't have to you know, beg anymore to, to somebody who sits in Lusaka. And if the UPND, for instance, doesn't like me, uh, they, they can hang. Because after all, I have money. Okay, given mm -hmm. to me by, by, by the constitution, because remember, you know, the budget is passed by parliament, which is, you know, a, a, a creation of, of the constitution. So I think that to answer my sister, the best thing that has happened for me and the best thing that has happened for the people is the increased allocation of CDF. Lovely, profound, profound response right over there. So uh, let me give opportunity to my fellow panelists so that they can interact with you and ask you all those important questions. So, Brother Jason, you are next up. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Muna. Good evening to you, Honorable Binwe Mpundu. Thank let you. Is a great to you. Yeah, this is Jason Chibwe. That is just... Uh, <laughs> My platform okay. name, of course. Uh, let me just quickly mention that uh, you excuse me for not uh, for not coming actually live, but uh, the person that you are seeing, that's me. I look exactly like that one on the picture there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, personally, uh, I appreciate actually your courage and your zeal. You can imagine, you know, 
uh, looking at uh, the way things were in the last regime, but you stood your ground uh, to be able to stand as an independent MP. And you know that in itself, you know, you encourage some of us to say, as long as uh, people have confidence in you, you don't have to look at uh, affiliated, you don't have to look to say, I need to be affiliated to this political party for me to be able to serve the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so on that one, uh, you are my, my number one fan, so to say. But I just have a few questions for you, and I believe, I'm sure, if Brother Muna is going to allow me, I would love you just to answer them as I will ask them quickly. Sure, go for it, go for it. Yeah, thank you so much, Brother Muna. Yeah. Uh, Brother Binwe Mpundu, uh, looking at you, I look at you as uh, a one brilliant person uh, who can even do business, who can be in a corporate world. But uh, I just want to find out uh, what motive uh, made you just uh, to choose to be a politician? What drive did you get uh, to say, I, I need to go into politics? Because uh, looking at the period you joined politics, I'm sure you were younger than uh, the way you are looking. So yeah. what motivated you not uh, to think of anything else? What motivated you really? Or is it like uh, maybe a social status or what? <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jason. I, I want to say that uh, for me, I think that uh, the motivation for anyone to get into politics must be for service. Yes, of course, uh, people have made politics now a money-making venture, which is not supposed to be the case. And I can guarantee you those who come into politics to make money who and have lamentably failed. For me, growing up as a very poor young man, I saw the, the imbalances in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, social needs for our people. Uh, I, I have uh, grown up in a very, you know, poor family. I've seen, you know, some of the challenges we went through to just get the basic education, you know, to get, you know, decent livelihood. And I told myself that when I grow up, want to be part of the group of people that makes a decision so that we can balance up because I could see the gap widening between the rich and the poor. And the status re requires to be changed and it can only be changed by, you know, the people who are in leadership. Because look, what has been lacking in this country has been the issue of uh, fair distribution of wealth. And I want to you know, uh, say with gratitude that uh, a step has been taken so far by the new government to try and you know, uh, 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 balance up in terms of wealth distribution. The, the decision to increase CDF is a step in you know, distributing wealth even to the least or to the marginalized, because now money does not sit in Lusaka, it will also be coming down to the very poor poorest of our people. So for me, what motivated you know, me was the need to save. I thank God that God has given me immense opportunities in life so far. And so I desire to do the same, to, live, to uplift you know, people's well-being. So I am here motivated by the desire to save. Right, uh, Brother Jason, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, yeah, actually I have about uh, three of them. Huh? Yeah, thank yeah, you so much. Uh, give those three it, questions. Uh, in yes, one, I'm, I'm sure. Let me just uh, give them uh, as a, as a whole, then you'll be able to answer them, I believe. Um, I think uh, the way you have answered my first question, you know, it is um, how people explain you. You are a man of service, and that's, and that's why I believe you managed uh, to scoop uh, that position, that constituency as an independent MP. Because, uh, you know, people have confidence in you because even before you were actually in the inner circle, you are somebody who is able to save. We hear people talking good of you. We hear people appreciating your services. So my second question, because, uh, you know, you mentioned the issue of uh, one of the things that actually pushed, pu pushed you to go into politics. You observed the inequality in the distribution of resources. Now, uh, Honorable Binwe Mpundu, I'm sure is in the background listening. Uh, being a young politician, uh, what type of a political leader do you, do you intend to, be, to become to sustain the demands of uh, the electorates? 
I believe uh, that you are one person actually who somehow stands uh, to sustain the promises that you made to the people. Um, and um, of course, having the confidence in you to save uh, these people, what, um, uh, how, do you, how do you intend to make uh, checks and balances as an independent political party, are you one kind of a person who at, uh, uh, at one uh, 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 given an opportunity to say we want to adopt you by maybe the UPND? Can you compromise on your checks and balances so as just to secure the position maybe in the ruling party? Are you one of that kind who can compromise on your values, on your standards, and also? on your aspiration as uh, one unique politician. I don't know, Brother Muna, if Honorable uh, Bobinwe Ompundu is in the background getting this question. Yes, uh, right now uh, he just uh, lost connection, but he will be back. But anyway, we got your questions. Uh, yeah, so we'll ask them once he returns. So what we're going to do is, because uh, uh, people are giving uh, a background uh, so of uh, analysis while asking the question. So let's just ask these questions. And then when he comes back, uh, when he comes back, we're going to summarize and ask in one sentence. So uh, brother Oscar, then we're going to pass it over to Novuzoka later on. So brother Oscar, uh, just give us your analysis and your questions for brother, uh, sorry, Honorable Mpundu. Then when he comes back, we'll give them in one sentence. So. What are your questions for Honorable Mpundu? All right. It seems, uh, brother, o brother Oscar, can you can you hear us, brother Oscar? All right. Okay. Internet issues. All right. So, Navuzoka. Welcome to the show. And what are your questions for Honorable Mpundu? He'll be back once uh, he reconnects. So give us the questions that you would love to ask him. And then he'll pick it up when he, when he returns. Thank you so very much. Are you hearing me? Loud and clear. Go on. Oh, beautiful. I've been really trying to get through. Yeah. Um, you see, the issue of CDF is close to my heart. And uh, when you look at um, Kenya, Kenya, I think it's about 15, 18 years ago, they came to Zambia to learn about CDF. Today, Kenya has moved miles away from Zambia. As we've been dilly-dallying, and now you, when you think about the way our former president managed this country, I tell you, those from the other side of the region, I tell you, the man looks like he was heartless. He was just something else you cannot imagine from this world. Now, my question to Binwell, how do we, as a parliamentarian, protect Zambians from such cruelty and the heartless of a president to select only some regions to receive CDF? Thanks. My gratitude goes to the President Hichilema, who has given such a huge and unprecedented amount of money to CDF. How do we protect our Zambians next time when we, we have such a cruel leader again? How do we protect our Zambians? I am suggesting, can not we pass a law through the private whatever motion bill that probably from now forward, CDF1 should be included in the constitution that no one should reduce it. The second part of it is that the release of CDF should be a constitutional mandate. No one should think, no one should start thinking who to give. Look at what President HH has done. Before right, end of uh, 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 Mr. Navuzoka, uh, yes. we'll get back to you. Honorable Mpundu is back. Can I make my question clear? Uh, yes, um, but you need to summarize it. So what we're yeah. going to do is, uh, you know, uh, panelists, summarize your questions. 
you know, like one sentence or two sentences. So you can make it easier for the honor but to uh, answer the question. So, Brother Jason, uh, without a lot of words, summarize your question so that uh, Honorable Mpundu is able to uh, answer it without going off on a tangent. Yes, I think I'll combine uh, these two questions. Uh, yeah, the follow-up question is, um, I would like to know you being a young parliamentarian, uh, what type of a political leader do you want to, to become to sustain the demands of uh, the electorate sector you put you? into that office and also having their confidence even to desire pushing you to higher political domains and the last one is uh, you being in opposition and an independent uh, politician how do you intend to make uh, checks and balances to the ruling political party so as to see this country having this country uh, this country uh, having an um, having that confidence in you, even to desire to push you maybe to say, ah, we would love uh, Binwe Ompundu to, to maybe to stand as president. How do you look at those two angles that are us? How right, do you intend so to make checks and balances? And what type of, uh, actually, a politician do you want to make at the end of the day, just to keep winning the hearts of the people? All right, so Honorable Mpundu, kindly unmute yourself, then you can answer the questions that uh, Brother Jason gave us. Mm. We, we, we cannot hear you. Uh, I don't know. Gentlemen, are you able to hear uh, Honorable Mpundu? Uh, I'm, I'm sure the Honorable is still muted. You can unmute himself. Un unmute. Yes. Yeah, he's, no. uh, muted. he's muted. Uh, are you able to do it from your end, Brother Muna? Uh, it's showing he's unmuted, and uh, uh, it, it's showing that the camera, the, the mic is unmuted, but still. No, we, we still can't get you. Okay, uh, try rejoining and uh, co reconnecting your devices. That will be uh, better. Okay, so as we wait for Honorable Mpundu to rejoin and uh, reconnect his devices, I think he's back. Uh, no, you're, you're still not audible. <laughs> You're still not audible. Do what you did in the beginning. It was working fine. But now it's not. Yeah, so the mic is probably not connected. When you're rejoining, you have to enable both mic and uh, the camera. The camera is already working, but the mic is not. So that's the only issue that we're having. We can see you, but we cannot hear you. Uh, okay, he's going to be rejoining. So we are still having a little bit of uh, connection issues uh, on the uh, end of uh, Honorable Mpundu, but he will be able to rectify the situation. So uh, let's try adding him back. Uh, can you say something now? Mm, no. Uh, panelists, are you able to hear him? Maybe it's, it's, it's on my end. All right. No, 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 no. Uh, what All type right. of a network is he using? Because uh, net, uh, MTN, if he's uh, on network, M M M MT MTN uh, has a lot of issues. So, uh, Honorable, if you are able to get us, if you have uh, Airtel, Airtel network, try to use Airtel network to rejoin. Then I'm sure you'll be you'll be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's hope he is going to be able to rectify the situation. But everything was working fine. Everything was smooth until he lost that particular connection. So we need 
to uh, get him back on board and we will be able to continue the conversation. So, Brother Oscar, we also lost you for some reason. Uh, Navuzoka is on fire. I can see Navuzoka is definitely on fire. We're going to give you the opportunity, but we're following the sequence. Uh, Honor Bompundu is back, but again, the... <laughs> The, the the mic is giving up on us. The mic is definitely giving up on us. It's unmuted now, but we still can't get you when you talk. But you are unmuted. The mic is unmuted, but we just can't get you. It has to be the device not being connected. Your browser isn't connected to your mic. But anyway, if... Uh, if Everything fails. You, we, you're always welcome. You're always welcome uh, to to come back, and then when the issue has been resorted, we could definitely continue. So, in the meantime, while we are waiting for the honorable to fix his issues, right, we still have a few conversations that we need to have. So, gentlemen, what do you think about the loans that need to be repaid as far as the youth empowerment is concerned? Uh, uh, and uh, for some reason, people want uh, Navuzuka to give his opinion. Uh, yes, Brother Jason is uh, back. So anyway, uh, Navuzuka, kindly unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll be quick. Let me summarize my, my earlier question. How do we protect Zambians from if at all have similar situations in future? Probably even when we had some of us old people had died. How do we protect Zambia? All Zambian people, whatever region tribe, that in future this CDF, they will continue receiving it without having to depend on the decision on one person who is cruel, who is heartless. How are we going to pro protect our future for our generation and children to come? That is my only question I have. Thank you. All right, but uh, Honorable Mpundu is still having the network issues. So just hold on to your question. When he gets back, he will be able to give you a very good and legit, uh, legitimate answer once he gets back. So let's just wait for him to sort of, uh, um, you know, reconnect. And then we're going to be able to re-ask him that particular question. So uh, in the meantime, let's tackle the questions that we were meant to discuss this evening for example the youth empowerment do you believe that amount of money needs to be repaid back and then as far as uh, the prophecy that uh davis Mwila, who happens to be the former uh, secretary general of the patriotic front uh he was recently well today he was uh, uh interrogated and asked questions by the police with regards to the vehicles that were used during the height of the campaign period. So, Honorable Mpundu, can you can hear you me? Hear? Yes, now we can hear you fine. <laughs> what did you do different this time? I just had to switch <laughs> off and on and off and on. <laughs> Lovely. Now you're back. Uh, so, uh, Brother Jason, give Honorable um, Pundu your question in two sentences, no, I, please. I got, uh, I got the questions. I got okay. the questions. Uh, so, look. For me, uh, in regards to checks and balances, I've intimated before that uh, I want to remain as objective as possible. Uh, even when we have agreed to work with uh, you know, uh, the, the ruling party, uh, I do not desire to remove objectivity from you know, my contribution in the, to the political happenings. And so I, th I think that uh, the public will benefit from me in that I will remain as objective as possible. In fact, like I stated before, the UPND starts to benefit from me because look, if, if a PF member of parliament criticizes government or the UPND, uh, the public is obviously tends to think that it's out of bitterness or otherwise. Would you say the same about me? I don't have a reason to be bitter towards the UPND after all, these are people that I have, you know, undertaken to be working with. So when you hear any criticism from me, number one, it will always be constructive. And it will always be coming from a good heart, meaning 
these are guys have you know uh, uh, voluntarily you know um, undertaken to work with and so when i criticize or castigate them obviously there is no ill intention meant so i want to promise brother jason that i'll remain as objective as i can be secondly i desire to be a politician that I, that will be selfless I desire to be a politician that will take the interests of the general populace at heart. There's a lot of suffering owing to the uh, unjust distribution of wealth. It, it, I, am, I'm a, I am that politician that would want to see wealth being distributed fairly and equitably because we have so much you know, mineral wealth. We have so much at our disposal. God has given us so much to have our people continue to languish in poverty. All that has been lacking is foresight. All that has been lacking is issues of selflessness. Others have exhibited the worst kind of selfishness and our people have continued to you know, wallow in poverty. So I am that young politician who wants to you know, take service at the center stage of my political journey. Lovely, lovely. No. So we pass it over to the next people. Novazoko has obviously disappeared, and uh, Oscar Mpombo has also disappeared. So we do have uh, Simukonda. Simukonda, welcome to the show. What is your contribution? You can ask your questions to Honorable Mpundu. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, and uh, good evening, the Honorable there. Good evening, Simukonda. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, actually, I concur with you uh, for, for what you have explained. Yeah, I think uh, looking at from your explanation, I think this is the kind of petition that we want. This Zambia, it's ours. So if you want to see development, we have to work together, whether we're in opposition, whether we're in a in ruling party. So... Um, You've mm. muted yourself, Sim Konda. Unmute yourself. Okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Then. Yeah. So um, if you want to see development as as, as a country, Zambia, and we have to we have to support each other. Yeah, like uh, what used to happen in the province. As citizens, we depend on you, Prisha. That's why we send you to go into parliament to represent us, not to present as a, a personal, as a as a as a political. Part, but to present to represent us as a citizen. That's the reason why, because us as a country, we can't, we can't go into parliament and uh, debate issues. So when you go there, we expect you to represent us, not your benefit, not for the political parties. And the decision that mm -hmm. you make there in, in a parliament should benefit us, not uh, as a political party, not as a as a as a as an mm -hmm. individual. No. no. We need mm. uh, your support there. Mm -hmm. So, what is your question, Mr. Brother Mr. Um, Mr. Hello. Go straight to the question. Go straight to the question. Time is running out. You can unmute yourself. You're muted. All right, okay, let's pass it over to Brother Oscar. Brother Oscar, give us your question, quick question, rapid fire. Brother Oscar. Okay, Brother Oscar is not able to hear us. Uh, let's bring over Na Navuzuka. Navuzuka, give us your question. Kindly summarize it. Don't go off on a tangent. Make it quick snappy the honor boy is running out of time he has a lot of things to do tomorrow okay talking about the 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 case of um, motor vehicles like you know in zambia any case of motor vehicles is unbearable what has happened today is unprecedented somebody was caught there and he was not even in jail he was not put in cells this is what we call progressive otherwise People should just be reminded that in the past, in 2011, MMD vehicles were confiscated and were put and were 
were not given to the MND officials. The officials were persecuted. And then as we condemn, like I saw our brothers there condemning about the European D. No, it's a question to Honorable Mpundu. You had uh, a question earlier. Give us well, that I, question. No. Oh, that question was... Yeah, without going off on a tangent, make it simple oh, 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 for the person to get the question. Thank you. Uh, my question was, how do we protect, if we have a monster again in your state, in your state house, how do we protect our Zambians that they are not going to be divided by denying them of CDF in future when we are all dead? How do we protect our future, our generation? Thank you. Honorable Mpundu, <laughs> that's the that's the question. Oh, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure I I've got the question, but I think that he's saying how do we protect the future? How do we ensure that we don't have a monster in in state house? I think that the way to go is what was demonstrated uh, starting from 2011, rather in in, in 2000 in 2001. Um, or oh, let me just start from. Is it 1991? In 1991, people came, you know, together to uh, uh, throw away UNIP because they thought that UNIP was becoming a, a, a tyranny. Okay. In in 2011, you know, people came together to throw away a, a government that they perceived was reckless. In 2021, people came together to throw away a government they thought had oppressed people. Okay. Now, so people have got the power, and this must be at the back of the minds of each and every Zambian, that within you is an alienable right to make a decision, you know, uh, uh, for your country in as far as governance is concerned. So when we see that we are cre slowly creating a monster in state house, we have got the ultimate power through the ballot to change, because look, God has given us a lot of leaders, okay? Uh, all we have to do is that if one fails us, we try the other, okay? So for me, the only way for us to be able to protect ourselves, to protect the future of this country is that we must continue to exercise our rights. Now, our rights entails that we must pay attention to what is happening in, in regarding the governance system. Now calls for all of us to continue to question leadership. When we see something wrong, it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. Even from the UPND, when you see the UPND government going wrong, you need to stand up and say, hey, guys, here you are going wrong. We have made mistakes before. Some of us who belong to the PF were very silent when some things were done. For me in particular, it pains me that I was in a position where I was gagged. I could not say anything because you guys, you know that, you know, the civil service, you know, dictates that you can't yap anyhow. And so... Those, for me, there were a lot of missed opportunities I had for me to be able to say, hey, guys, here we are not doing correct. But now I have an opportunity to be able to castigate government that, guys, you are going off tangent. So I think for us to be able to protect our, the future of this country is that we must be able to raise red flags when we see something wrong being done. It doesn't matter whether you belong to PF, you belong to UPND, or you belong to Zadeco or UNIP. All we have is a duty to be patriotic, not to a political party, but to Zambia. Mm -hmm. Yes, please go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I, I wanted to clarify. He didn't get my earlier comment. I, mm. I, was, I, I was contributing on the CDF. The mm -hmm. CDF was used as a tool to divide this nation. One person had to decide which region to give. Other regions were denied of CDF. I'm saying, how do we protect our children, our grandchildren in the future? Should we have another monster in state house who will be dictating? Even this 25, 25 million that has been given, he will decide not to give other constituencies. What do we do that all constituencies in Zambia are going to receive this CDF, whether the president in state house is a monster or not? Can't we do something now before so that our children, children who come and look at us and say, this is what our forefathers did. 
that's the it's protection. A very, it's a very brilliant question. In fact, I I I I want to think that you 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 came into my mind at some point when you know the budget was presented during our argument. My 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 take was that the issue of CDF must be enshrined in the constitution, namely the dates when this money must be disbursed must be put in the constitution because as it as it is now you wish to know and i hope that i'm not you know diverging information that is not meant for the public there's an argument technocrats are proposing that the cdf will be released in bits and pieces which is absurd okay because if you give me 25 million kwacha give it to me because i have eight eight, eight words in my constituents all those words have got challenges that people are waiting to be you know sorted out so if you give me bits and, in bits and pieces it means that our 10 to 1 problem when i finish this problem that when i go to the other but give it to me give the whole 25 to me so that i can start addressing problems you know once or at once so the best way to protect the, the, the Zambian people is to ensure that issues of CDF are enshrined, namely starting from you know the the the, the distribution, starting for you know from uh, uh, um, disbursement or the dates of disbursement. All these are you know uh, uh, enshrined in the constitution. Then we will not be at the mercy of somebody who is sitting in the ministry or somebody who is sitting at the state house. I think that it's a very important you know you know question. Lovely, lovely. So let's move over to Brother Oscar. Brother Oscar, give us that rapid fire question. Summarize your question uh, so that uh, Honorable Pundu can be able to assist us with the with the answer. The floor is yours, uh, Brother Oscar. Unmute yourself, then go on. Brother Oscar, unmute yourself, then go on. Muna. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. As we wait for, for, for Brother Oscar, I, I'm interested. There's a comment that was made by uh, Nabuzoka, namely that I had made some accusation on the UPN. I'm interested to hear that thought. Right. Okay. So, Brother Nabuzoka, can you just uh, clarify the earlier statement that you made? Uh, concerning the earlier one, I was, I was just saying, I was actually not criticizing Honorable. I was just saying, look, what has happened today is uh, it's unprecedented. The case at police was actually a motor vehicle related case. And the, and the laws in Zambia requires that when you are you have such a case you are, it's unavailable and the uh, honorable Muira was not uh, detained today i was just uh, giving thanks to the to this government for doing what they did today but i also was uh, had a problem when i saw that uh, honorable kamwiri was there trying to disparage the, the current president. Honorable Kambuli was uh, in PF government when MMD uh, lost power. What did they do? They confiscated motor vehicles, campaign motor vehicles for MMD. They were a lot. Actually, Nakachinda should be jailed for that unbearable case for motor vehicle. MMD has taken that case to police. You see, now I was disappointed that they were criticizing for somebody who was actually treated fairly. So I, I wanted to say, let's reflect what PF did when they took up power in 2011. They arrested people, they got away the vehicles, and today what has, what has happened, they didn't arrest Mwila. So really for that, it was a plus on this government, and as such we should do, recognize and admit that, okay, on this part, this government has done well. Better than even Mr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Kamwiri himself, uh, who, who said that actually he wouldn't go back to PF, he would be considered a lunatic. Thank you. Mona, um, I've, I've been extremely busy today. I've not followed the activities. Uh, I've not been on social media to you know, see. But what the little I've heard is that uh, you know, uh, former Secretary General for the PF was summoned today regarding i need to be corrected regarding you know the vehicles that the pf used in the campaign is that the, the story right yes that's okay. the story so uh hold on and let me just bring up the actual report uh from diamond tv so that you can get the 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 perspective 
Uh, okay, so, so basically, now, what okay. happened? Uh huh. But go on. Uh -huh. So I've I think I've gotten the the issue, and what Nabuzoka is basically saying is that uh, actually, you know, uh, Mr. Mwila should have been jailed. Now, uh, I'll, I'll I'll share something from. I need to be corrected. The challenge we have in this country is that uh, I I want to be very clear. I need to be guided or corrected. Mm -hmm. The challenge we have in this country is that there's no law that prescribes or that you know um, uh, dictates that sources of you know mm, okay we are losing the honorable at this particular moment so he will be right back with us as soon as he reconnects so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, uh, and uh, we are here streaming live and coming at you direct from the Z Corner Studios. We are having an interesting conversation with Honorable Binwell Mpundu, who happens to be the independent member of parliament of Nkana constituency, and we are taking in questions at this particular moment. A kind reminder to all the people watching us at this particular moment. Big shout out to all the people joining us on Facebook, on our Facebook official page and our Facebook secondary uh, page, which is Z Corner TV and Z Corner official page, and and also YouTube. So, Honorable Binwell uh, is right can back. Can you hear me? Yes, we we can hear you now. We kind of lost you, but you're not, but now you're back. So the thought the thought I was uh, sharing, and I, I I I asked that I could be forgiven if I'm misguided, is such is that the ch the challenge we have in this country is that I don't think that we have sufficient laws that prohibits or that seeks to, you know, uh, 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 dictate that when you are campaigning, you must review your sources of financing for your campaigns. I wish to be guided if there's that law. Now, in the absence of that law, you, you know, nobody has a right to question, how did I get this car for my campaign? I think that that is where the challenge lies. So goes with the UPND. You know that the UPND had a lot of machinery in the campaign. Nobody, in the absence of that law, has got a right to question how did you uh, hire this helicopter? How did you get these vehicles? How did you get all that? If there was a law that dictates that, then you can actually say this, you know, you having this. Uh, uh, you know, equipment that you used in the campaigns that could not properly be accounted for or declared, then you have committed a crime. In the absence of the law, I think that what happened today is as normal as it should be. And the, in the confiscation of water vehicles by the, you know, uh, against the MMD was uh, a mistake that should not have been entertained unless there is a law and I stand to be corrected. All right, so Navuzoka, I hope your question has been uh, answered and you are satisfied. Very satisfied. Lovely. So let's pass on the opportunity to somebody else. Brother Jason, you can proceed with your other question. So just make it quick and make it snappy. Then the Honorable will be able to uh, answer you back. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, just a pickup from uh, Brother Navuzoka's question uh, concerning... Um, uh, concerning uh, how do we protect actually the future uh, of our country from uh, having maybe ruthless leaders on those top positions. Uh, I heard uh, uh, the Honorable mention to say, as electorates actually, the members of the public, they have got rights actually to change whatsoever they feel that uh, is not capable of running this country. Now, um, uh, the, the question goes like, uh, now, him being a young politician, I think, uh, um, uh, uh, for how long, for how long, uh, uh, Honorable Bompundu, do you think uh, we can keep on experimenting on uh, political leadership without actually having a change of color on the economic development of our lands? Because uh, I feel strongly that uh, in, uh, because of uh, uh, having actually uh, political leaders in Africa 
who are maybe after those uh, social status. I'm not mentioning that you are one of uh, you are one you are one of them. We are yet going to to know you whether you are one of those. But for how long do you think, as a, a African or in particular? Uh, for how long do you think Zambia will keep on experimenting on political leadership without having actually a change of color on the economic development of our country? And you being an independent uh, um, politician, uh, how do you intend actually to ensure that uh, we don't continue having such, such individuals who call themselves to be leaders actually they are just landsakas uh, of uh, actually the general the general public resources. So, brother Binwe, what do you think about um, that uh, that question? Yes, yes. Okay, so Jason, unfortunately, what we have, even the constitution itself, you know, you know, um, uh, gives us a situation where we have to try one person after the other. Because whether we like it or not, you know, uh, uh, the constitution prescribes, you know, that a person can only rule as for 10 years, meaning that we have to try somebody for five years. If they do well, we again put them back into power for 10 years, meaning that no matter what we do, for as long as our, our constitution remains as it is, we'll continue to try one leader after the other. Uh, unless we think otherwise, but I think that it's a beautiful thing because if we had the one year, year, year scenario like we had before, even when somebody messes up, you live with that somebody for 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 God knows, you know, uh, uh, for eternity. So I think that having the power to change a leader as and when they don't perform is the best thing that can happen to a people because you need to be, you know, uh, in in charge of the decision making as far as who is going to provide leadership for you such that when they messes up you have the ultimate responsibility and you know the right to be able to remove them from leadership so that you can try others the the, the, the beautiful thing we have is that god has not given us short of leaders we have a lot of leaders except that we will not find the perfect one until we continue to change one after the other thank you thank yes, you so uh, now yes sir yeah, yeah, just a follow-up, brother Amnanda. Just allow me to uh, to to ask this question. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking of uh, democracy and uh, change of leadership, uh, mm -hmm. just a devil's advocate. Would you mm -hmm. be one of a politician who can admire the the the, the political the the political way of, uh, of Pokagame? Would Pokagame be one of uh, the political leaders who can inspire you? And how do you look at uh, the economic development of uh, actually Rwanda and Zambia? How can you describe the difference? Because if you look at Rwanda, having come from the ashes, but uh, we cannot compare ourselves to Rwanda when it comes to economically and stability in the way they are running politics. Though him uh, being uh, some sort of, uh, some people may call him, a dictator. Would you be one of the politicians who would uh, want to learn from Pokagame and would want to infuse Pokagame's ideas in our country so that we see things uh, moving? Thank you so much. Well, let, let me state this, that uh, for me, I'm envious of the achievements that the, 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 our friends from Rwanda have achieved under Pokagame. But if you compare, you know, the democracy in Rwanda and the democracy in Zambia, as we have absolute democracy, okay? Whereas in Rwanda, I want to uh, uh, be corrected, they have got a dictatorial democracy, meaning that, you know, a president can actually dictate, can actually, you know, uh, uh, come up with something that people don't agree, but they have to go with it. Look, the best thing that could happen to us as a country to move from where we are is to have a, a style of um, democracy they have in Rwanda. Except, look, th there's nothing as beautiful as having absolute leadership. All right? What we have in Zambia is absolute you know, democracy where people have got the right to criticize government as and when it pleases them. Whereas in other countries, you know, uh, they, sometimes the, the, the citizens doesn't even have the right over 
you know, or in regards to you know criticizing or questioning the decision of government. I'll give you a practical or a perfect scenario of China. You know that in China, you know, uh, people don't question their government. And of course, they've been able to develop because you see what brings us backwards is the very fact that we, uh, you know, leaders are scared to make tough decisions because they are going to come under condemnation. If we gave President HH, okay, the leeway to, you know, rule us as he please, I can guarantee you we can go a milestone. But the very fact that he has to ask himself, am I going to be uh, uh, crucified by the people, is the very fact that some is limited in a way because whereas he would want to make very tough decision, is also restrained because he is thinking of what will be the reaction of the people. Kagame, on the other hand, will make a decision uh, knowing that very few will be able to even question, if there will be any to question them. And so is the issue in, 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 in China, for instance. A president can wake up today and close off internet in, in China. Nobody will raise their voice because they've accepted the norm. Here in Zambia, you remember during the campaigns when you know Facebook was closed, oh, you should have heard the insults. So it's good, it's bad. But we see, we are envious of the achievements of our, our friends in Uganda, or in Rwanda, rather. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that uh, remarkable answer. So let's pass it over to uh, Brother Oscar. Brother Oscar, I really hope your internet, your connection is so that my internet is flawless, ladies and gentlemen, so it can <laughs> never be on my end. So, uh, Brother Oscar, <laughs> go on. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. Finally, the, Itali right. uh, the Italian internet I, is working now. <laughs> go on. I, I don't... I I don't know whether it is the Italian internet or it is Muna, Mr. Muna's internet. I Mine don't know. I think myself, myself <laughs> I'm going to presume that it is Mr. Muna's internet, which is really making it so crazy and, and funny for us to interact. Right. right. Okay. Good evening, uh, Honorable um, Pundu. Good evening, Mr. Pombo. How are you doing? I'm okay. You know that um, I am. Um, I'm your citizen. I'm. I'm a, a, a key to a resident. I'm an Odindeke resident, actually. So I'm, 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 I'm the given. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Though though I've been expatriated to this place, this beautiful place, and um, I've learned a lot of things. And so, uh, first of all, I thank you and I congratulate, I congratulate you for being elected in, um, in this constituency because I think the, the people say that you are quite a, um, a hardworking person, hardworking man, and, um, and uh, that is what I personally would love. And uh, that's what I've, uh, I think, achieved here in Europe, to um, appreciate anyone, regardless of color, regardless of the political affiliation. So um, I appreciate what the people talk about you in, um, in, uh, in, in Kitwe. And we are happy that you are a member of parliament. Thank you. So thank you very much. But um, I know it's very difficult, of course, also for you to expose yourself because you, you, stood, uh, you stood as an independent. So it's mm. quite, quite difficult. And uh, there are questions that I would love loved to ask you, which are definitely I cannot ask you because being an independent, you cannot expose yourself. I know you were part of another party, and now you are obliged to work with a different party as well. Uh, mm. But um, I thank what you have exposed so far in this um, um, platform. I really appreciate. And uh, I hope you can uh, contribute to the betterness of um, the situation there in Kitwe and, um, and um, in the in the constituency which you, the people have given you the authority to, to govern. Uh, what I have been following your, um, your, um, 
your discussion and uh, really I uh, appreciated uh, most of them. Um, what is your question, uh, uh, Brother my Oscar? Question, my question was, um, um, my question was, um, Honorable Minister, uh, is it um, easy for you to expose yourself, your um, your affiliation, or what can I say? Is it, is it easy for you to say whether? Ah, uh, well, well, let me say this mm. about the IMF, Mister Binwe Mpundu. About the IMF, of course, we know what does this this government has done. This government, what they have done is just to come and find the solution to give the, the, the to uh, solve the problem of the debt that the government, the former government um, inherited. And uh, we have no option. Definitely, we have no option. Mm. The solution to this disaster, I personally, I know that the solution, we have it in Zambia. We have the solution mm -hmm. because Zambia has a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. but, but Mr. Honor, uh, the Honorable Bino Mpundo, you know that in the Copper Belt, we have a lot of, of resources which we can solve these problems mm -hmm. of debt and the problem of... <laughs> internet. <laughs> Italian internet. <laughs> <laughs> Italian internet, yeah, for question time. <laughs> Brother Oscar, it has to be your internet, uh, for so. Um, <laughs> anyway, since people are very long winded, quite clearly, <laughs> my question to you, <laughs> Honorable Mpundu, is uh, yeah. obviously uh, you are a close associate of uh, Honorable Christopher Kangombe, who is obviously presiding over Kamfinsa constituency. And uh, these are very fundamental and uh, crucial constituencies on the Copper Belt, to be precise, Kitwe. So do you, I, I did ask you about uh, def defecting or rather joining uh, the UPND. Do you think it would be advantageous for you and Honorable Kangombe to align yourselves with the UPND. And due to the fact that you're very young and very vibrant, you stand a better chance with regards to longevity. Do you ever see this particular play to be something that can really sustain your political careers and uh, push it a little bit further? Well, for me, let me state this. I don't know what Kangombe thinks, um, but I'll say this, that uh, look, uh, First of all, the constitution doesn't provide uh, that I can, you know, defect to the UPND. Then I would have created um, a by-election. Okay. Secondly, is that uh, look, our colleagues in the UPND are extremely jittery about receiving new people. You saw what happened yesterday. If you follow the activities back here in Zambia, you know, my my own sister, you know, Rashida was defecting yesterday to the, you know, uh, UPND. The level why, of agitation. Why do you think, why do you, think they are, uh, you know, jittery and uh, not so welcoming? Well, look, the UPND has been in opposition for 23 years, if, if I'm correct. And obviously, everyone within the ranks and file feels this is our time for us to obviously get our benefits for having stood so loyal to the party. And so the nature of a human being is that when you see somebody you become skeptical. So you can understand the education is genuine, it's real. But you see, one thing that you know a, a, a lot of members in the UPND miss is that they've got power now, but there's also an aspect of consolidating power. Okay? Because because if you don't invest in avenues or in in, in 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 consolidation of that power, you can easily lose it. Okay. So I I wonder, you know, in the, the thinking of people that are saying because they actually need those numbers. So as a politician like me who is seeing the happenings, 
<laughs> obviously mm. it's 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 something that i cannot attempt to do at the moment because look i have a value on myself i don't want that value to be you know uh, washed in the drain you know by people you know up you know uh, right away object you know or rejecting you so look for a political future it will be it would be uh, uh, nice to align ourselves to the people that are in power now but look for me to you know, to grow my political journey or to my strength, I have an opportunity now to show chaos my leadership credentials by performing in Inkana. When I perform in Inkana, even next year, if I decide I'm going to be on my own, the people of Inkana will say, we still need you to be on your own. I, I don't owe my political life to a political grouping. I owe my future to the performance I'll put in in the next five years. I think that is what is critical, is that I've, given, I've been given an opportunity to save. And if I save well, the people themselves can actually tell me if I should go left or if I should go right. Because look, let me end by let me end that response by saying we've been mm -hmm. at the mercy of political parties for a very long time, and some point these political parties have not even appreciated us. <coughs> Excuse me. I, for one, I have wor I worked so hard for the PF, but you, all of you, you are aware of how much mm -hmm. I was mistreated. So. Mm -hmm. I've said to myself, never will I be at the mercy of a political party. So my future lies in how best, how hard I will work given this opportunity that I've been given. Perfect, perfect. So the other question that I have for you is, uh, obviously right now, uh, former Republican uh, President uh, of Zambia, uh, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, is in a very tough spot with regards to uh, either resigning from active politics because his benefits are obviously at stake. And uh, there are a lot of members of the Patriotic Front who want him to continue being the leader of the Patriotic Front because he's obviously got the reputations and the resources to mobilize and uh, keep the Patriotic Front afloat. So what do you think is going to happen to the Patriotic Front with regards to the leaders are we going to see new stars uh emerging from the upcoming convention and what would you advise them to do in order for them to stick around well i'm very skeptical discussing you know president lungu in the media look i have a lot of respect for that man he he contributed to my political you know uh, uh, uh standing uh but let me say this what killed the or unip Mm -hmm. is the rushing to remove President Kaunda from leadership. What mm -hmm. killed MMD is the rush to remove uh, uh, President Banda from leadership when they lost power. What will kill the PF is the rush to remove President Lungu from leadership. When a political party loses power, the former president must hang on to build another leader. Because obviously, like you stated, the, the former president is the one who has the connection, he has experience on governance. What should have been happening now is that President Dungu must have identified a possible successor, and I want to think they should have picked a very young person, start to groom him, start to connect him to you know finances and all that stuff. But look, I, I know that even as we are discussing this, I saw a letter that came from Secretary to Cabinet. President Nunga has already resigned as, a, you know, a president of uh, of the PF. So, but what I would have loved is that he should have continued if the PF, you know, should find chances of bouncing back. Because only then should he have picked somebody, but you know, uh, preferably very young that he starts to groom up and to groom up would mean to start, you know, you know, telling the dictates of leadership at that highest level and also to start connecting to resources because it's not easy today. Politics is very, you know, extremely economic. So, or rather commercial. So for you to, you know, uh, manage a political party as big as a PF, you need to have, you know, uh, uh, assured, you know, sources of financing, you know, uh, to sustain the operations or the activities of the of that political party. So I want to believe that uh, President Nunga has already resigned, seeing the letter that we saw, unless it was fake. But I think that if he hasn't, I would, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually advise the PF that they must let him hang on 
And in the meantime, he must begin to groom somebody who should eventually take off. And preferably, that must be a very youthful you know, fellow. <clears throat> very diplomatic response right over there. Uh, so, <clears throat> Honore Bompundu, you have obviously been the former DC of uh, Kitwe, if I'm not mistaken. There has been this particular notion with regards to the perception of a lot of people who are occupying ministerial positions and a very key uh, position in, uh, government, uh, in government. For example, we obviously heard uh, Mr. Davis Mueller talk about the fact that ministers in the patriotic front regime would obviously end up going to jail. And we obviously heard uh, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, notions coming in from uh, Bowman Lusambo saying it's very difficult for ministers and people occupying key positions to steal alone because there is a cabal and there is obviously cooperation. So do you think this particular notion is right? Do you think uh, there is a lot of uh, backdoor activities happening and everybody is collaborating? And adding on to that particular point, right, we obviously heard uh, President Hichilema say the clique of thieves is contaminating my ministers. So how do these particular projects and funds get to be handled? Well, look... Uh, one thing that I know, having served in a government position, is that these positions are very tempting, okay? Um, and so it's very difficult for somebody who is sitting in a position of a minister to resist the temptation that comes to those offices, all right? Um, now, the... At the back of every person that is appointed to serve in, in a government ministry or department, they must always realize that there will come a time when their ill deeds will come or will haunt them. So there's every need for them to act right. All right. And I can tell you very clearly that even the new ministers, having served as, as, as short as four months, if they've not started started entertaining thoughts of dipping hands in, in unwanted places, they are likely to start entertaining those so, thoughts very soon. But my caution to them is that you've seen, you know, uh, how your other friends are dancing around. So you must never think that yours will be, your, your stay in that office will be in perpetuity you need to know that even you, there will be a time when you leave that office and all your actions, all your activities now, they will come back haunting you, especially if your activities are ill. So it's, look, issues of corruption are um, very deeply entrenched in most African countries. It's very difficult to, you know, uproot corruption because to some extent, even the people that fight corruption are equally themselves involved in the long chain of corrupt activities. So it's very difficult, but every leader has the responsibility to ensure that they work towards reducing corruption to the minimum, to, to, the, uh, to the barely minimum. Uh, to expect that even President HH will reduce or will remove corruption completely would actually be you know uh, thinking the impossible but we can always believe that there will be a leader who can reduce corruption to a barely minimum but you see corruption is 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 a scourge that involves a lot of players in as far as fighting it is concerned individuals must get involved because there is a corrupter and the corrupted okay so if I'm being corrupted, I must ask my question, is it noble that uh, I should receive this bribe? The one who is bribing must equally ask himself a question, am I doing the correct thing? The one who is spectating, the one who is watching, the one who is hearing about the corrupt activities must equally be there to blow the whistles. That's how collectively we can fight corruption. But if we are going to be ignoring, or if we are going to be waiting until uh, uh, when uh, you know a party is out of government, 
then we would lose this you know battle completely so that's why the onus lies in uh, all of us including members of the upnd now to ensure that we do not allow the ugly head of corruption to cripple in the new government. Everybody has the confidence owing to the pronouncement by the president that perhaps this is a government that can address corruption, but he cannot fight corruption alone. I can tell you as it is now, where it is on the ground that some of our friends who are serving in government today have already start, started dipping hands in wrong places. But they must remember you know, uh, our, in members we say, Kuchivodia Takuvula Umukaya. Everywhere you are, there will be somebody who will be listening to your conversation, somebody who will be watching your activities. Definitely. And Honorable Pundu, we are receiving amazing responses from our viewers across Facebook, YouTube. And a lot of them are saying that you are a very brilliant, youthful leader and you have you have got so much wisdom and you are media trained. You are able to give these diplomatic responses and all these amazing responses, which are very, very educative. Now, my question to you, if you are still here, I don't really know whether you can hear me. Um, I think we we lost him. He needs to rejoin. So what I wanted to ask is obviously the fact that uh, when it comes to the caliber of leaders in Zambia, we do not have any specific uh, grading or sort of uh, level that we can grade our leaders. We always have a variety of leaders with uh, uh, different qualifications, different characteristics, ETC. Welcome. My question is, uh, uh, with regards to the leadership and the spectrum uh, of leaders that we have, how can we ensure that the majority of leaders that represent the people of Zambia are of a certain caliber? They, they are cut from a certain cloth. How can we uh, promote intellectualism, uh, proactiveness, and just basically being uh, heavy-witted and uh, having good qualities, if I can put it that way, because some of our, our leaders, they are very questionable. Of course, I'm not really going to mention any names, but you already know some people I might be talking about. So how do we make sure that our leaders are pretty much intellectuals? They are of a very high caliber. Well, the, the people, there's the voters themselves have got the ultimate, you know, a, a mandate to ensure that we probe each and everyone who comes forward to ask for, you know, you know, for, for votes. Okay. It's it's look, what has killed or what has made the scenario uh, a, a bit diff different and difficult is that we we are voting individuals based on political you know uh you know inclination today you don't ask you know uh, the capability of somebody for as long as they are standing on your political uh, party of preference you are going to vote for the minus questioning is this person you know uh, capable of delivering where has he been from or wh where has he been what has he achieved where he's coming from i think that and i want to give you an example and, and i and i'm amazed and extremely elated at uh, you know the decision that was made by the people of nkana the people of nkana remember nkana has got eight words we have two councillors who came from UPF, one councillor who is independent, five councillors who are UPND, the MP is independent, and the president was from, the one who got more votes was UPND President HH. Now, that, that in, in itself tells you that the people of Unkana were analyzing part, in the people that came forward for leadership on an individual basis. In Inkana, there was nothing like he's standing up on a political party. Each leader that came up for leadership were assessed based on individual capabilities, you know, based on a lot of factors. And I think that is how we can protect the integrity of politics in Zambia, where the electorates have got to question you. Right. Uh, again, we're having uh, internet issues. They've got to subject you to, uh, by way of, you know. Uh, I think Honorable Pundi are receiving calls in the background. If you re uh, if you receive some calls, 
then we're going to lose you. Uh, the connection is going to be weakened. So I think uh, the honorary boy is receiving some calls in the background. Uh, but he's back. Oh, thank so, you. So, yes. The responsibility lies in the electorates themselves to be able to, you know, scrutinize everyone that comes up for leadership. It must not be business as usual. It must not be on the basis of where somebody, on which political ticket somebody is, is, is standing. It must be on the basis of somebody's, you know, leadership strength. We must be able to look back at somebody's life. Where are they coming from? What was their past, you know, uh, performance in whichever role, in whichever activities they used to do? We must be able to assess all that. We must bring all that into context as we, you know, uh, make a decision as to who we are going to choose or to vote for either at councillor level, at parliamentary level, at uh, uh, mayor, mayor level, as well as at presidential level. Right. So how do we prevent ourselves from having a debt uh, situation getting out of hand, like what we recently experienced with the Patriotic Front? Because obviously there were a lot of things happening in the background, and then we ended up defaulting on loans. So would you say that there was negligence with regards to spending uh, or rather utilizing the money that they uh, obtained and uh, got in form of uh, loans, ETC? So how can we do better and prevent ourselves from being in trouble with the IMF and contracting a lot more debt? Mm, I think Honore Bompundu is, uh, um, I think he's going to be back. So Navuzoka, I, I can see you have some more questions. So uh, you, ca you can unmute yourself and simplify the question in one sentence. Uh, Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, I All right, hold on, uh, Navuzoka. Uh, Honore Bompundu is back. He should be loading. Hold on, hold on. We'll get back to you. Nawuzoka. So Honorable Mpundu is reconnecting. And we will also be concluding in the next few minutes because we have been running for over two hours. Uh, and I, I just want to say thank you to all the people who are currently still watching us. Uh, if you have been with us from the beginning, obviously you have seen the technical issues that we've been having in the background, but hey, the show continues to go on and we are going to be rel uh, relentless. Thank you very much. Uh, continue sharing this video, make it go viral, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you are on YouTube and continue supporting us. So share this video in five different groups that you belong to. Honorable Pundi, welcome back. I think you're receiving a lot of calls. So next yeah. time we need to have an out, uh, uh, another plan so that you don't get calls because you're getting I think it's network issues. Network issues. Right. I've received very few calls today. Definitely. Okay, so my question was, uh, uh, obviously, there was a little bit of negligence and uh, carelessness with regards to how uh, the previous regime were utilizing the money that they obtained in form of loans. So obviously, we ended up defaulting and uh, having a lot of issues with the IMF. So moving on forward. What things can we put in place to prevent ourselves from falling into such a similar situation? Well, first of all, uh, the members will tell you, Muna, that meaning that if you are cooking, you know, and shima, you have to measure the size of uh, or the quantity of your mini meal. What happened in uh, uh, during the reign of the PF is that. You know, the PF was very ambitious in as far as wanting to undertake developmental activities against the size of the national pace, you know, which made the PF go all out to go and, you know, borrow to sustain, you know, the appetite to bring, you know, the massive development that we've seen over the years. Now, issues of whether the, the, the projects were inflated, that is a subject for another day. Now, for mm -hmm. us to be able to protect ourselves against contracting further debt, we must be able to make parliament or the people of Zambia get involved in approving or disapproving uh, you know, the contraction of loans. Today, you'll be told that parliament has to approve the acquisition or the contracting of a loan. 
they 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 lie that law doesn't it's it's there but it's non-existent per se mm -hmm. we as parliamentarians we are simply rubber stamps a government will go and borrow and only report to us how do you come and you know uh, 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 tell people who are supposed to approve your the acquisition of a loan that you have already borrowed you must start with them. You must, in, first of all, start with parliament and, you know, e explain as to why you are going to go and borrow. Because parliament is where the people reside. That's the people's house. The people who are there represents the interests of all the Zambian people. So if parliament is going to continue being the rubber stamp it has been in issues of approving of loans, then I'm afraid that we may slip our, or rather slip into further debts. Because as it were, we have already continued borrowing. Because look, the argument has been that uh, 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 it, IMF, uh, obviously, we are paying at a very, very uh, little interest, but it's still a loan. It's actually going to add on the portfolio of uh, the loans that we currently have. So to guard against, you know, contracting further um, loans. But look, uh, Muna, you wish to know that we still will have to borrow. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. uh, not deb debatable. We still will have to borrow. The question is, for what are we going to borrow? Mm -hmm. We must borrow not for consumption. We must borrow for productive ends. We mm -hmm. must borrow for investment into, into avenues that are going to create wealth, avenues that are going to give us more money to be able to even pay off the debts that we currently are sitting on. But at every point that we decide to go and borrow, the people must be involved. By way of that intention to be taken to parliament is exhaustively dis, you know, discussed and everybody satisfied that this borrowing is for the right cause. Now, right. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me perhaps take a response or rather a, a tend to uh, uh, give a perspective as to the IMF. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of argument as to whether we needed the IMF or not. Mm -hmm. I think that's also the turn that uh, Brother Pombe was also trying to drive us to. Look, mm -hmm. uh, where we are now, we cannot sustain our debt vis-a-vis -vis being able to pay uh, uh, on the timelines that have been dictated by the lenders. So we needed, mm -hmm. obviously, flexibility. We needed to be able to have uh, an opportunity to be able to flex you know, how uh, the payment terms. So going to IMF obviously gave us that opportunity to be able to say, wait a minute, guys, we don't have enough money. Can you hang on? We are going to give you this and that. But the question has always been, it's a question that I even asked the Minister of Finance in Parliament. Sir, you went to the IMF. All we desire as a people is to know what have you agreed with the IMF? What conditions are you give the Zambian people? Is it going to be bearable or it's going to be unbearable? Meaning that there should have been a simple process of consulting the stakeholders. Look, guys, we are going to borrow because it's inevitable that we have to go to the IMF because failure to go to the IMF will plunge ourselves into an economic disaster. The people, when you know, look, my experience through leadership, Muna, is that when mm. you engage the same people who actually support you, who actually push you, you know, towards the decision that you desire to, 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 to make. So whether we needed IMF or not, yes, we did need the IMF, except what we needed was for the people to be highly informed prior to the engagement of the IMF, guys, this is what we are going to do, and these are the terms that we are going to put on the table. Right now, people are skeptical because they don't know the contents of the agreements that was made between the Zambian government and the IMF. But we still needed the IMF. But look, going forward, I think that after all is said and done, when we manage to come out of all this debt indebtedness, we as a Zambian people can actually survive on our own. We have immense resources. I stated in parliament before that with all the gold we have, with all the emeralds we have, with all the natural resources we have, I don't feel we can even be walking proud as a Zambian people that we continue to borrow, yet we sit amidst so much plenty wealth. 
I, 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 I blame decisions, for instance, to allow you know, mining of gold to be in the hands of individuals. The government must have been in, you know, in the driving seat in managing certain precious minerals like gold, like you know, you know, diamonds, uh, like emeralds, you know. So going forward, I think that if we manage, God bless us, if we manage to walk out of this indebtedness, we must be proactive as a people to question a government regarding issues of borrowing. We must, again, be proactive in making sure that we harness the immense opportunities we have vis-a-vis -vis the wealth that is deposited in our, in our, in our grounds. Definitely. And pulling back the layers, right? Obviously, one of the reasons why the Patriotic Front was chucked out of power was due to the fact that uh, the cadres became a nuisance. How do we prevent cadres from obtaining so much power and how did the cadres obtain so much influence and so much power how did that happen and how can we prevent that from ever ever happening look if you have children i have children in my house mona eh? mm -hmm. if a child today comes with 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 a shoe i'm seated with visitors in in my sitting room a child, my, my last born, comes with a shoe and hammers the visitor. And I say, ah, no, he's, a, he's only a baby. Do you know what I'm creating? I'm creating a monster. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the, the, the reluctance to be able to question the decisions or the activities, to monitor the activities of our cadres, is what allowed our cadres to become very big-headed, or to become a monster that everybody now agrees we had created. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So going forward is to be able to walk the talk. I have intimated before that I'm extremely elated at you know, the pronouncements that have been made by you know, President H.H. H. regarding his detesting of Kadarism. And his actions have clearly shown that this is a man who is committed towards ending Qatarism. But can he manage alone? No, Muna, he can't. He needs a whole battalion of his lieutenants to follow suit. The issue of Qatarism can only be fought when all of us together agree that this is a, ba a bad vice that must be fought. But today, if you say, for instance, I'll give an example. I wrote a, a, you know, a, 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 a post when mm -hmm. that woman from um, Kasama was attacked. She was my deputy, by the way, when I served as DC in Kitwe. So I wrote a, an article where I was condemning the actions, but because I stated that these were sub suspected you know, UPND cadres, the way I was bashed by supporters of UPND. Now that tells you that our friends from the UPND are also you know, trying to go the route we went in the PF of protecting or rather or supporting things that even didn't make sense. Okay, so there's a need for our friends in the UPND to tread very cautiously in, on, on the issue of Qadarism. Qadarism as it is, even now, it's very rife because we've seen a pocket of incidences where Qadars have taken turns you know, in, 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 in doing the unwanted. So it will call for the leadership, not just President, um, President H. H. President H. H. has demonstrated the will to fight this vice. But we need to see the same vigor by all these people on the ground. We cannot have a situation where police have to wait for the president to be uh, uh, furious, to, uh, uh, to summon them to act. The police must immediately mm -hmm. move when they hear that cadres have done the unwanted and not to wait for anybody to instruct them. That's the only way we can win this war. To think that this is a war that can be uh, fought and won by the president are we aligned to ourselves we are lying to definitely, ourselves definitely definitely and uh obviously we're about to conclude uh honorable Mpundu has been with us for a very long period of time i can see my panelists have got some questions so panelists <laughs> kindly summarize your questions don't go off mumariashi <laughs> <laughs> 
So Nabuzoka, unmute yourself, then you can uh, give your, your, your question. First of all, I want to congratulate um, the Honorable on his uh, winning of the city of Kichwa. Yeah. Uh, mine is, I will be brief. Mine is uh, on the tribalism. I'm always apprehensive of the future, looking at our age now as we are aging. How, what society are we going to live? This tribalism, how can we keep it in future? Looking at how we were, we were brutalized in the last regime, just because HH is Tonga, anyone who is Tonga, he is gone. I'll give you an example. Today, Savoy wanted to find tribalism in HH by, um, by categorizing that central, southern, central, southern, western, northwestern, or Atongas. How can we prevent tribalism? Do we have laws in Zambia that prevents tribalism? If we have, what is the problem? That is my question to the honor. Thank you. Well, uh, Amuna, my response to start with, the very fact that as we ask this question, we are, bro we are, we are bringing in issues of, or tribe. It's, we are very far away from fighting tribalism. How I wish my, my brother in his submission did not mention a particular tribe. Okay, the very fact that we'll be saying we were brutalized as Tongas and what it, it will tell you we are far away from winning the war uh, on tribalism. Now, tribalism is a cancer that requires, like, like, like a Kadarism and corruption concerted efforts. Number one, we should stiffen our laws. Okay, we should stiffen our laws in regards to the punishment that is meted on people that practice tribalism. That is number one. Number two, all of us must get involved. If you see somebody driving you towards or somebody you know, bringing in, you know, uh, issues of tribe where you are, you must outrightly condemn them right there and then. The challenge has been there's a lot of entertainment. We tend to entertain people who bring this tribalism. And thirdly, let me, let me state with all honesty, I have heard very young, very few young people who are on record practicing tribalism. Tribalism in many cases, if you, you, you check the record of politicians who have practiced tribalism, they are very old folks. There are very few young politicians who have practiced tribalism. In which case, I'm suggesting that we need a lot of young people to join politics because we as young people, look, I went to schools where I mixed up, you know, uh, with people from different tribes and I saw it very normal. In my circles, when I was in boarding school, I had people from all tribes in my circles and we didn't see any, any wrong in that. In, in my politics today, I, I, I don't even think that uh, there's issues of tribalism. In my camp, me, I'm, I'm, I'm from Luapula. My campaign manager is, low, is, is Tonga. I have a lot of my inner circle who are from different tribes. Because I'm a young man who has been to school who I, I, will not look at another individual based on tribe. So for us to be able to... <clears throat> Um, okay, I think that's the network. Uh, Honor Bompunda will be back. And uh, in the meantime, let me just read some of the comments coming through. I can see Nora uh, saying uh, she does agree with uh, Honor Bompundu. And uh, uh, she is obviously concurring with him. So she says, word Mpundu. <laughs> Uh, then Davis uh, Simbai says, people need to stop giving simplistic solutions to two complex situations. Natural resources are well and good. We have, uh, but, but you people who, to factor in cost of production, KCM is not that at that level of production. Okay, so that was uh, Davis uh, Simbai. Honorable, welcome back. We lost you there, so I you can conclude your... I think from Munkana. <laughs> <laughs> from Munkana. <laughs> Mentioned three things, namely that we must all outrightly uh, express our disgust for people that practice tribalism. Number two, we must stiffen our law, stiffen our laws 
if there's a law, I know there's a law that, you know, punishes people uh, that practice tribalism, but we must stiffen that law. Thirdly, is that we must have a lot of young people, educated young people to join politics, because I don't think that uh, 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 we can count two, three, four, ten young people who are in politics today who have been practicing tribalism. We see that vice from uh, the old folks. Right. And uh, Stella Muyunda has got a contribution. She says, I do not agree with not mentioning tribe when discussing the evils of tribalism, especially when the person discussing is from the marginalized group. Otherwise, we'll be dismissive of the issue. When we, are your... trying to cure, mm -hmm. when we are trying to cure this cancer, what does it help us to begin to lament about which tribe was marginalized, which tribe was brutalized? I think that for us, we have a starting point. We must be at a point where we all realize that a lot of mess was created vis-a-vis -vis, there was a lot of tribalism. At that point, we must then be seeking to start afresh. To start afresh, you must be willing to let go of the past. This is what I have always, you know, insinuated. This is what I've always, you know, uh, stated in, in my advice to my colleagues who are serving today. If you want to be successful as you govern this country, forget the PF. They are long gone, okay, mm -hmm. and let it come back. You start here and start running now. I'll give an example, uh, Mona. Mm -hmm. Leadership is like a relay. Right? Right. In right. relay, we pass on the button. You call it the button, right? Right. Now, when a button is passed to you by the one who was running before you, you right. don't you don't start to question why didn't you run faster? You can see my friend is already gone. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is get that button and start aiming for the one who is in front of you to surpass him. So when you are in charge of leadership now, you must never pay attention to the people that were behind. Look, I am in charge of Unkana now as MP. Mm -hmm. It was fashionable during our campaigns to uh, uh, portray the previous guy as having failed. But mm -hmm. what does it help me now to continue talking about Alexander Chiteme? He's gone. The people of Unkana are not no longer interested in him. They are now interested in the agenda I had promised them. So mm -hmm. my, my, my short message is, if we want to open a new page, we must not waste so much time about who created that monster, who did what. We must now tell ourselves that we have come at a point when we must bury the issue of looking at each other in the lens of tribalism. We must now begin to unite as a country, as one brother, as sisters, so that we can, you know, uh, uh, live in harmony. I think this is the basic message that I'm trying to send, you know, put across. Definitely. And you raised a very valid and uh, profound point with regards to youth participation. But uh, obviously your case and uh, Honorable Christopher Kangombe's case are very rare. And uh, you are obviously unique, one of the kind type of people. So how do young people get to participate? Because we obviously heard people like uh, uh, Honorable Boman Lusambo on record stating that it is impossible to compete with established, well-vetted politicians because you don't have the capacity, you don't have the resources. So pulling back the, uh, the layers, how how can youths participate and be able to make an impact and obviously get results just like the way that you have been doing yourself? Well, Muna, if if Honorable Usambo uh, uh, made that statement, uh, it was misguided. First of all, uh, money is not everything. Uh, I think that the story of Unkana tells you everything. Money is not everything. I was able to beat somebody who was very well placed in, in as far as having money is concerned. I was able to beat the, the, the ruling party. I was able to beat the, 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 the most, uh, the strongest opposition now ruling party with very little resources I had at my disposal. Now, 
So issues of finances must not be a, scope, a scapegoat for young people's failure to join the political space or for young people's failure to compete for political position. Young people must realize, look, we have been very comfortable as young people in the notion that we are future leaders. We have often been told you are future leaders and we have been very comfortable. Uh, in fact, most people, most young people have celebrated, you know, uh, uh, the announcement. If they are told you are future leaders, they have been very celebrative, meaning that our time will come. Nobody will tell you, Muna, when that future will come. That mm -hmm. is something that was cleverly crafted to keep young people in the terraces. I am mm -hmm. telling young people today that you are not future leaders. You are future or you are leaders of now. For me, I often say this story. I often say, I make this remarks that young people's time has come if you go to our parliament today we have seven youths when i mean youths in its original mm -hmm. uh honor bompundu i think uh uh, you need to uh, rejoin as well. Uh, so, Brother Jason, while we are uh, waiting for Honor Bompundu to rejoin, uh, do you have any last questions for Honor Bompundu before we close the show? So, uh, in the meantime, let's add uh, Honor Bompundu back. Thank so you. Uh, yes. I was basically yes. stating that for all those young people who think that for you to make it in politics, unless you have money, they should come to Nkana because in Nkana, that young person was written off from the onset who had no money, beat a giant. And in giant, I mean in the context of finances. But look, mm -hmm. if the young people think that political power will be given to them on a silver platter, they are lying. Mm -hmm. Political power, or rather politics, is power. Nobody will give you power that easily. Power is fought for. Just like in 1964, when young people in the likes of Bakaunda and his team mm -hmm. came together to fight for that power, you as young people are expected to fight. This is, this is the statement I gave to a group of young people I found who had invited me to a discussion. They are pushing for proportionate representation meaning that young people must be given you know, equal opportunities to be in parliament. I told them, guys, I can tell you nobody's prepared to give you proportionate representation. It will forever be a song that will be sung by many politicians. If you want to be in parliament, you must be ready to fight the way me and many young people in parliament today, we are able to fight for this power. M quiet, M quiet. Uh, so let me bring in Brother Jason because we're concluding. I, I swear we are concluding now <laughs> because uh, the honorable needs to go. Brother Jason, give us your quick uh, question so that we can uh, allow the honorable to rest. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Brother Muna. Um, before maybe I pose a question, let me appreciate you, Brother Munalula, for bringing in. Um, uh, our brother, I should say, my brother, Binwe Ompundu, our honorable, you know, uh, being actually uh, 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 a member of a certain political party and an aspirant, of course, in the coming general elections, uh, uh, a parliamentarian, I've learned a lot of things from Brother Binwe. You know, there is so much wisdom in him, uh, looking at the way he's responding to the questions, you know. Uh, it has uh, given me a lot of direction. It has given me a lot of confidence. Now, just taking him back uh, to the issue of corruption, you know, uh, we have this civil service, actually, which is uh, actually at the core of uh, developmental implementation. So, brother, uh, let me address you as my brother. You know, I love yes, you so yes, much. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, I yeah, it's of honorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that prophecy. You know, uh, it's been uh, awesome interacting with you. But uh, just you. taking you back uh, on the issue of uh, corruption, 
you know, we have civil service and uh, it is apparent uh, that uh, corruption actually is uh, at the core perpetrated by this civil serv serv service. You know, civil service is vast. There is police, there is prison, there is actually other administrators. So now, brother, Honorable Mpundu, if you happen to become um, the president of this country, how would you love to see civil service in operation so that we have efficiency? Of course, uh, bypassing all these bureaucracy, actually, which are detrimental even to, to certain issues of agency. How would you love? to see the color of civil service if you happen to come as a president of Zambia. Right. So, I, sub uh, I submit, Brother Muna. I definitely. Submit. definitely. Uh, I, I, I do believe uh, Honorable um, Pundu has uh, received the question, but he'll be able to rejoin very soon because uh, the internet is buffering. So Honorable Emmanuel J. Banda is asking how to join and ask a question so honorable j band i hope this is the correct uh well i hope this is the authentic uh emmanuel j banda because he's also an independent member of petawoke so i hope this is the authentic page so Ima uh, honorable emmanuel j banda in case you want to join and uh, ask a question to honorable uh Benwa Mpundu, use the link in the comment section so i'm just posting the link and honorable emmanuel j banda you can ask the question even though uh honorable Mpundu needs to go i swear he's going to be going very soon uh, Honorable Mpundu, did you hear? I've been with you uh, for two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. we have enjoyed you. We have enjoyed you, actually. We don't even want to uh, <laughs> let, let you go. You know, it's been uh, a productive, educational, actually, discussion that we have with you. It's one of uh, the best, actually, of the discussion that we have ever had on Z Corner. Right. And so did, I, you, did you hear his question, uh, Honorary Bompun? Did you hear Brother Jason's question? You can just proceed and answer his question if you did. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the network issue is still going on. So Honorable Emmanuel J. Banda, independent member of parliament from Petawuke, the link is being posted in the comment section below if you want to ask him a quick question. We're just going to accept one, one, uh, well, two more questions from Brother Jason and then from Honorable uh, Jay Banda all the way from uh, Petaoke, well, representing Petaoke. <clears throat> Hello, guys. Yes, you're back, you're back. So you can proceed yeah. and answer Brother Jason's question. So look, um, the civil service is an important or an integral part of, uh, you know, you know, the governance of this country. Without the civil service, there cannot be a government at all. Of course, look, you know that us as politicians, we come in and we go. The civil service will remain. They, you know, they are the engine of uh, this country. Everybody requires that the civil service must be professional that must be you know you know effective in 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 their mandates must be efficient in the way they utilize resources but look there there are there are many things that must be at play if we are to ensure that the civil service performs up to expectation and when you talk about corruption vis-a-vis -vis the public service uh, corruption is a cancer and corruption in african context in african countries has been deep rooted it requires concerted efforts the question is who goes to corrupt the, the the civil servants okay because corruption there's no corruption in government circles that happens without a civil servant being involved okay politicians are actually in most cases many conduits or uh, only ingredients to the corrupt activities. The actual perpetrators of corruption are civil servants because they are the ones. You cannot say a minister you know, um, uh, was involved in a corrupt activities and you leave out a PS. A minister right. doesn't sign on checks. It's a PS who signs. The minister you know, does not sit on tender committees. It's a PS who sits. So the main players, in, in uh, the main culprits in corrupt activities are uh, actually the civil servants, but they will give you an excuse that they were pushed by politicians. So for us to be able to deal with issues of corruption, what makes people get corrupted? Number one, it's lacking. You know, when you, uh, you make people work for peanuts, 
somebody wants to survive, they will obviously begin to you know, uh, uh, create other avenues or start engaging in other activities that wants to, or that they think can make them you know, uh, meet the other ends of their needs. Okay, so as a country, we must, you know, endeavor to continue upgrading our civil servant by way of uh, good remunerations. In that way, we'll be, we'll be keeping them off corrupt activities. Okay, mm -hmm. so well, there, there, there are a lot, there's, there's general education that is needed. I think that corruption must be a subject that must be, you know, introduced in schools so that from the infancy, from childhood, somebody knows the evils of you know, uh, uh, you know, getting into corruption. Like our members will say, or charity begins at home. So if mm -hmm. we have to kill the cancer of corruption, these are things that must be, you know, you know, entrenched or rather that must be incorporated into our education system. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mpundu. Um, Independent member of parliament for Petauke wanted to ask you a question. So it seems the, 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 the questioning and the participation will be continuing even after parliament because you guys obviously yeah. interact with each other. Uh, so we're obviously inviting Honorable Emmanuel Banda as well to participate and just have these uh, interactions with you uh, as well, uh, Honorable Binwa Mpudu, so that we can have these uh, sort of conversations and discussions that are unfiltered and people can really get to know you and see your perspectives as well because we are receiving a lot of positive feedback from our viewers uh for example nora has been asking uh which political party you belong to uh you know because she's amazed by your prowess and your uh you know intelligence so which political party do you belong to according to uh nora uh, nora's question i belong, I belong to a non-existing political party <laughs> Nora, my sister, right. I'm an independent member of parliament uh, sponsored by the very good people of Nkana constituents in Kitwe. Lovely, lovely. So, hey, uh, now if you want to a little, but unfortunately, we have to let you go. Thank you very much, despite the challenges. Give us your concluding remarks, and then we bid you farewell. Well, first of all, I want to sincerely thank you, uh, Mnalula, for the opportunity that you've given me today to be able to interact on uh, you know, issues that are affecting the country. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the people of Unkana who gave me an opportunity for me to even be here. It's because the people of Unkana have given me a platform that has you know, made people see that I'm a young person, obviously, who is growing politically. You know, I'm a person that wants to learn. But let me state as I conclude that Zambia is a rich country. And we are here because some people have not done the correct things, those that have held leadership before. And I don't mean to point at a particular person. Zambia is where it is today because some people before or now have acted selfish. We are a country, you know, endowed with, you know, a, a huge, a huge array of mineral resources that cannot continue to go begging to the Western countries for arms. Now, for us to be able to move from where we are now, we need, you know, to work as a team, all of us. Regardless of where you come from, your political aspiration, your religious subscription, you know, your level of education, all of us must begin to say to ourselves that Zambia belongs to me. And your activities must be in tune with the fact that you want Zambia to progress or to, you know, to get better from where we are now. Time of fighting has gone now is a time for us to unite for a cause to make zambia a better place i do not desire for the upng to fail because if they fail all of us as a country would have failed i desire the upng to succeed because when the upng succeed they will all of us will succeed if i want to be president one day I must wish President HH to succeed so that I could step on an already better country. Nobody should ever pray for President HH to fail because they would have been inheriting a country that is in ruins. So time has come for us to you know, uh, uh, remove 
or to start uprooting corruption, to, to join hands in uprooting corruption, to join hands in uprooting you know, tribalism. Time has come for us to unite as a country, for us to be able to appreciate what God has given us, the immense mineral you know, wealth in our souls and the brotherhood and the sisterhood that we we enjoy as a Zambian people. So for me, time has come for young people to stand up and be counted. Those who told you that you are future leaders, they were clever. They wanted to keep you in terraces so that you can be watching the big boys play the game. Now is the time for young people to step up and be counted. Yours is a time to tell a story. And I always say, as a young person, tell your story to the best of your ability. If you are a musician, sing to the best of your ability. If you are a footballer, play to the best of your ability. If you are a politician, be magnanimous in that role as a politician. All of us as young people must be at our best in telling this story. For me, Munalula, I thank you and I thank the people of Zambia. I particularly want to thank the people of Unkana and I wish nothing but success to everyone who has passed to succeed in whatever endeavors of life they are pursuing today. And all the best to Zambia. May God continue to bless all of us. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you. That was absolutely brilliant, flawless. But there is one issue, Honorable Emmanuel, uh, Jay <laughs> Banner from Peter Uke, <laughs> really wanted to join, but we're not going to do it, unfortunately, today. But uh, with your permission and your approval, uh, uh -huh. Honorable Mpundu, we can always do it some other time. We can invite uh, Honorable Jay Banda and any other people to come on the platform and just have these conversations with us. Uh, so, Are you tired? On, are you tired or you can allow JJ to come? I, I can, but he, he further says that he doesn't have the application. So we need to walk uh, uh, him through the process. So, okay. uh, Honorable Emmanuel Banda, kindly, I'll, I'll inbox you, I'll get a hold of you, and then we'll go through the process of setting up the application. So that next time is going to be fire over fire. So we're going to do it next time. So we're definitely going to be uh, in contact with you. I love uh, my brother. I love JJ. He's a remarkable young man. Let me just say this without, you know, uh, beating around the bush. I love you, my brother, JJ. I've seen, you know, your commitment to the people of Petauke, and I know that, you know, give, given time, the, way, the time that you've been given, you are going to do exploits. I love the young people. You know, I'm committed. To, I'm very passionate about the affairs of young people, and I can see that through the life of JJ. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, have a great uh, night, uh, Honorable Mpundu. It was very, very amazing having you. We wish to have some more profound conversations with you in the near future. I sincerely uh, thank you. And on behalf of our viewers, I'm sure they really enjoyed. Thank you very much for uh, giving us three hours of your time. <laughs> thank three you. hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. Take care. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. Take care. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, Abale Joina by Richard Wadat for the Sendama. We can do this all, all day, any day. Uh, but we, we just have to, you know, uh conclude and uh bid everybody farewell. So, Brother Richard, some other time we'll have the conversations. We obviously have live streams on a daily basis. So have a great night. The, you, uh, you Mr. Are very Mr. Mr. Mlarula, on a daily basis, what time do you, uh, do you start your program so that uh, I may get to that? Okay, so officially, ni pa 20 hours, but uh, kuna wako feka Zambian time sometimes, pa 2030, but by 2030, not to, not to we are trying to get rid of you, this Zambian you are, time. You are, you, are, you are a moderator, so you have at least to keep time. Eh? <laughs> yes, we we'll definitely be keeping you know, time. So you, okay. you know, I want to come and also talk to these two people, especially Honorable Binwe Mpundu. He is my inspiration, and uh, there are times when I comment to his uh, post, uh, but he doesn't reply. I wanted really to talk to him, as well as the JJ Banda. I know JJ Banda was in Eastern Province for a certain time. Yeah, so I think uh, I wish them, I think by tomorrow I'll be on time. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, take care. Have a great evening, Richard Banda. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from the Z Corner Studios. I really enjoyed that uh, particular conversation. And uh, to be honest with you, <clears throat> uh, uh, he, he was never caught off guard. Uh, Honorable Mpundu is very well 
media trend. All the questions that we asked him, no matter how controversial they were, he was pretty sober. He didn't shy away from anything and he always came back. So that's always, uh, you know, very interesting because sometimes people are caught off guard and uh, sometimes people just end up blundering. But for him, he was always on point. He was always sharp. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are very impressed with him. He's definitely good people. He's been a friend of uh, Z Corner since way back in the day, since uh, 2020. So uh, after he got elected, he's still part of Z Corner. And we are definitely humbled by his uh, commitment, uh, especially to the plight of the young people. So this is definitely something that we are uh, in support part of so there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's all we had for you tonight so honorable jj banda sorry honorable uh emmanuel banda will be looking forward uh to having you on the platform as well i'm sure it's going to be fire i'm sure we've got a lot of discussions to talk about so please uh i will get in touch with you very soon probably tomorrow and we'll set up everything and uh yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting having a conversation with you, especially that you are also an independent member of parliament. So uh, have a great evening, night, day, uh, afternoon, wherever you are joining us from, because I'm sure we are very global. We've got people in Zambia. We've got people all over the world. So big shout out to everybody that has been watching us. And remember... Uh, keep on sharing this video because it does help us get motivated. So the more we grow, the more we get motivated, the more we are uh, definitely going to be, you know, doing bigger things. So I'm running out of uh, water. And my lips are getting a little bit dry because we've been streaming for like uh, three hours. Ah, now I'm finding inside of food. So uh, we have to conclude this and uh, have a great evening. So take care and uh, good night.